Cincinnati's offense came to life yesterday, pounding out 18 hits, including five home runs, en route to taking three out of four from the Baltimore Orioles. Tonight, Tampa Bay heads to the Big Apple, where right-hander Chris Archer looks to continue his dominance over the pinstripes. The Rays move into the Big Apple, and it is a gorgeous evening for baseball. Clear skies, 81 degrees. This is game one of the three-game series from Yankee Stadium between the Rays and the New York Yankees. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to an evening of Rays baseball with Brian Anderson. I'm Dwayne Stats. We'll be hearing from Todd Callis in just a few moments. Great to have you looking in. Well, the Rays fresh off that three out of four victory in the series in Baltimore will send Chris Archer to the mound, and boy, he loves to pitch here. You cannot do any better than Chris Archer has done against the New York Yankees. Four starts, a record of 4-0 and with a 1.26 earned run average. 28 and two-thirds innings over those four starts, so you love the fact that he's getting deep into ball games. But the reason for his success is twofold. Number one, he's not hurting himself with the walk. Just three total walks in the four starts. And number two, when he's gotten into trouble, he's gotten out of it. Runners in scoring position, an 071 earned run average, just one out of 14. He continues that trend, and there's no reason to believe that he won't get that fifth win here tonight. He's been that good and has a lot of confidence going up against that team. Archer beat the Yankees earlier this year. That was at the drop. The last time he pitched here in July of last season, a two-hit shutout. Didn't walk anybody. Six strikeouts en route to that victory. So the Rays begin this series, and before we get down to business at hand, we'll go back to tomorrow. The Rays scored 12 runs, 18 hits, five of those hits, and a couple of home runs off the bat of Matt Joyce. Todd Callis reviews the victory.
in the Bronx against the New York Yankees. A nice smile on Matt's face pregame, and why not? When you're coming off a historic performance in yesterday's game, you have reason to smile. Matt Joyce put his name into the Tampa Bay's record books, Tampa Bay Rays record books yesterday with those five hits and 12 total bases. Let's take a look and reflect on Joyce's day. First A.B., solid double into right field. Ben Zobris was out prior to that, stretching a double into a triple, or that would have been an RBI. This is an RBI on the home run, then a little cue shot for his third hit. That's a single. Only needed, needed the triple for the cycle at that point. Little line drive single is fourth A.B., four for four at that point, and then five for five with a home run. Ended his day five for six. His hitting coach knows when Joyce gets on a roll, he can stay on a roll. Yeah, when he gets hot, he can get real hot. In fact, and I told Forsythe that yesterday during the game after his third hit. I said, when Matty gets hot, you know, I mean, he can hit home runs in bunches, and you know, we come to a good ballpark where he can swing the bat and maybe get a couple balls in the seats here, so it's good. Matt Joyce in the number three slot in Joe Madden's lineup as the Rays will kick off the first of three against Derek Jeter and the New York Yankees. Chris Archer on the mound for Tampa Bay, looking to improve his career mark to 5 and 0 against the Bronx Bombers. All the action next on Sunday. Rays ready to open this series in New York against the Yankees. They come in with a game lead in the season series. They've won four, the Yankees three, and the Rays took two out of three from New York here earlier this year. Tonight's lineup for the Rays presented by your Southern Four dealers. Desmond Jennings again leads off, followed by Ben Zobris and Matt Joyce. Evan Longoria, James Loney, and Brandon Geyer down the middle. Logan Forsyth at second. Ryan Hannigan hits eighth, and Kevin Kiermeyer in right, the number nine hitter. And the Rays will be going up against right-hander David Phelps, making his 11th start of the season, three and four record, 4.35 earned run average. He's coming off of a no decision against the Toronto Blue Jays, a game in which he went five innings, giving up six earned runs. A game that actually Toronto would go on to win seven to six. All set to play baseball. Desmond Jennings in the batter's box. First pitch from Phelps swung on and a bouncer foul. First pitch presented by Pinchopenny. Desmond scored two runs in yesterday's victory down in Baltimore, 12 to 7 over the Orioles. 
Joe Madden continues to utilize him out of the leadoff spot. Takes this pitch for a ball. It's one and one. Desmond's last 21 starts. Now 22 have come in the leadoff spot in the order. And Joe Madden's still waiting to see Desmond really break out in that leadoff spot. He's given them the opportunities. And but right now, the batting average not quite where he would want it. The on-base of barely over 300. When Madden put him there a little over three weeks ago, you had the feeling that it was a situation where Joe said once and for all, yeah. we want to see if Desmond Jennings can be the leadoff guy. Ground ball short. Jeter's throw to first. Jennings is out number one. Now let's take a look at the Yankee defense as it lines up tonight. Brought to you by Gold and Diamond Source in the outfield. Left to right, Brett Gardner, Jacoby Ellsbury, and Ichiro Suzuki. Across the infield, third to first, Kelly Johnson, Derek Jeter, Brian Roberts, and Mark Teixeira. Brian McCann will be behind the plate. There's Derek Jeter, who has turned 40 now. Headed to the all-star team. And the Yankees with two 40-year-olds in their lineup tonight, Ichiro being the other one. Ben Zobris takes a strike. Those two, Suzuki and Jeter, they started in a ball game, same ball game on Friday night against Boston. And according to Elias, that was the first time that the Yankees have ever had two 40-year-old position players start in the same game ever. That's hard to believe. And now they're making a habit of it. Well, you know what? Listen, they're like everybody else in this American League East. You've got to win games now. No one has been able to do that. The one hopper out to second. Roberts floats his throw to Teixeira. And I think that's why the Rays feel so confident in their ability to climb back into this race is because no one has been able to seize control. This Yankee team, since the beginning of June, they've had two four-game winning streaks. They've had two four-game losing streaks. Yep. No one can put together much of anything consistently. Well, they're only two games over 500. In fact, they're two games under 500 at home as we see the standings in the East. The Rays have made up a little ground. They're now 10 back. Baltimore game and a half behind Toronto and New York two back. We even look at that Toronto club and in the last three plus weeks they've not been very good. And Joyce looks at that first pitch in there for a strike. You know they really had a chance to have a stranglehold on the division and in their last 22 games they've dropped 15 of them. And so that's kind of brought them back to the pack. Inside shift is on for Joyce, and with that, the Rays are not yet in a position, at least when you talk to individual players and Joe Madden, they're not in a position where they're ready to write off the season. As strange as that may seem to some people, you know, they're 10 back and trying to trim another game or two here during this stop. Two and two now. You just want to go out and see how interesting you can make it. And the only way to do that is to focus on the task at hand. It's not getting into the newspapers and looking at the standings and seeing how many games back you are. It's just, you know what? We're playing well right now. Let's go out and play another good ball game tonight, and we'll see you all here tomorrow. And it's that mindset that they're going to have to keep. Joyce fouls it right back out of play. But, you know, a lot of confidence on this team right now, especially, I think, going into Baltimore. You know, tough four games in three days, splitting the doubleheader and then coming out, performing well on Saturday in a win, and then obviously blowing the doors in on Sunday. Now the count is full on Joyce. Three and two, Matt, with five hits yesterday. A couple of home runs, a double, two singles. You could get him hot in this stadium with right field the way that it's configured. 
Three two and there's a high shot deep into right center field. Goodbye home run for Joyce. Three two pitch and he tees off. So he starts today where he left off yesterday. Well Matt Joyce he can be streaky and he can get heated up. And here it is full count fastball. It's up. It's where Matt can get fully extended and see it. So the Rays break out in front. There's Evan Longoria who loves to hit in this stadium. Evan 10 home runs overall for the Rays. Head in the count. Well, this is a Yankees pitching staff as a group. They have now given up 89 home runs on the season. That is most in the American League. So you'll get some opportunities. And the way the Rays have been swinging the bat, you feel like they're going to be able to cash in. Two and one. It was the eighth home run given up by Phelps this year. 71 innings. We'll take the count to 2 2 on Longoria. You know, the Rays are going to have the opportunity on the day game on Wednesday seeing Vidal Nuno. He's given up 15 home runs. Corota tomorrow night is given up 11. And they've actually swung the bats well against him at times. There's a base hit the other way for Longoria. Chiro down to one knee to make the pickup. So with two outs, Joyce has homered, and now Longoria keeps the inning going with an opposite field base hit. Well, continue to make Phelps work, add pitches. And give James Loney an opportunity. And we've seen him be able to drive the ball had a home run in that Baltimore series doubled in two runs yesterday one ball no strikes you're so right about the way the Rays look at this situation one game at a time, one inning at a time, really. You're not going to make up all that ground all at once. One ball, one strike. We live in a world of instant gratification. Mm -hmm. You know, we want everything right now. I want to be able to make up those 10 games, you know, in two days. Yeah. But the, the mindset is correct. I think these guys all realize if they are going to make noise, it's going to be a long slog, mm -hmm. and you're just going to have to put the time in, put the work in. This is the position that you put yourself in, and so to get out of it, if you're going to get out of it, it's going to take a while. Yeah, and I really think that's one of the redeeming things about the nature of this game. We don't want to get sociological about it, but I really think that's one of the positives of this game. The season's long. Mm -hmm. if, if you find yourself behind, you're going to have to dig your way out one step at a time. Doesn't happen overnight. Swing and a miss. Loney is out on strikes. Matt Joyce has given the Rays an early lead with one swing of the bat on this 3-2 fastball. We go to the bottom of the first on nothing Rays.
for the Rays putting up a run in their half the frame. Joe Girardi's lined up. Fred Gardner leading off. Derek Jeter second in front of the third place hitter Jacoby Ellsbury. Mark Deshera, Brian McCann, and Carlos Beltran down the middle. The former Ray Kelly Johnson's at third. Brian Roberts hits eighth. And Ichiro Suzuki ninth. Well, that lineup is going to see right-hander Chris Archer. He's making his 17th start of the season. And you, you've got a very focused Archer coming into this start. First of all, he likes the idea of pitching against the Yankees. His numbers against them across the board are outstanding. And he's coming off of a start against the Pittsburgh Pirates where we saw them have a very good approach off of him. They got him for five runs, four of which were earned. He took the loss in that game and none too happy about it coming into this start. So look out so that line up to face Chris Archer and here's Gardner first pitch is in there for a strike call boy when you think about Brett Gardner you think obviously speed on the base pass one of those guys that can swipe a bag first to third but extends at bats Strike two. That's going to take some work here as he is down 0 and 2 right away. Well, the top three hitters in this New York order could be bothersome for Archer in that Gardner's history pretty good against him. Four of 11 with some extra base hits, but he's out on three pitches here. Fastball in, catches him looking. Did I say something about extending at bats? <laughs> well, forget that. Nasty. Fastball strike one, slider strike two, and then a little comeback fastball at the belt for strike three. Chris Archer starting out with three very good pitches. Picking up a strikeout looking. And now here's Derek Jeter. Jeter coming off a two for four in their game against the Red Sox. Last night, hitting 275 for the year. Forsyth in front of this one, two gone. Two up, two down. Well, let's take a quick look at the Rays defense tonight. It's brought to you by Gold and Diamond Source in the outfield, left to right. Brandon Geyer, Desmond Jennings, and Kevin Kiermeyer across the infield, third to first. Evan Longoria, then Zobris, Logan Forsyth, and James Loney, Ryan Hannigan will be behind the plate. I'll tell you what, I love that lineup that they're running out there right now. You read through those defensive guys. Mm -hmm. Again, you go to those corner outfielders with Geyer and Kiermaier, the way they're playing right now. I love the way the infield is working together right now. And then getting some extended time out there at shortstop with the unavailability of Yanel Escobar. There's Jacoby Ellsbury. The pitch is a strike. Our big matchup, our GMC big matchup, is Ellsbury against Archer. Great. Slight reference to that early. He is 7 of 10 with a double off Chris Archer. Ground ball, and it's going to go through past Loney. Ellsbury is aboard. 8 of 11 now off Chris Archer for Ellsbury. And every once in a while, you just have one of those hitters that has your number. And you start to get up 11, 12, 15 at-bats. Boy, that's uh, a little bit more than a trend. But you know what? Jacoby Ellsbury, pretty doggone good hitter, too. Good attempt there by Loney, but that ball was stung. Mark Teixeira. Pitch is a strike. Boy, this Yankee team will run, so you got to keep your eye on Ellsbury over there at first base, especially with two outs, trying to get into scoring position. Mark Teixeira has been swinging a pretty hot bat lately, four homers in his last eight games. Ellsbury and Gardner do most of the running on this club. Fly ball the other way. Geyer will back up. He's got it. No runs ahead. One left.
at the end of an inning on Duffing Tampa Bay. Toyota, let's go places. And by Checkers, big Philly flavor, small price. Checkers, Philly cheesesteak, and the new Chicken Philly, each just a buck ninety-nine. Well, the Rays with a hair-raising series in Baltimore taking three out of four and they've jumped out in front one to nothing here in New York tonight and if I'm not mistaken those were the same two guys in Baltimore right Rays insisted that they come for this series in New York now there, there's even more uh, that hair was a little bit more laid back if you will in Baltimore big city though <laughs> it's all excited yep one ball, no strike here. The count. Ground ball is short. Jeter makes the throw to first. Geyer is retired to begin the race second inning. And how about Logan Forsythe and the way he's been not only swinging the bat but playing overall. But really his revival at the plate has been most encouraging and it's it's been fun to see him respond the way he has 452 in the last 10 games it's down and away well you can, he looks like a different hitter I mean for a long time his swing was slow it looked like he was kind of feeling for the baseball now he's up there and just ready to go and when he makes a swing it is right now Chopped to third. Kelly Johnson's throw is in time. Forsythe is the second out. A couple of quick outs here in the inning for David Phelps. You know, and even outside of his hitting, his hitting has been very good, obviously, but he's played a good second base. Mm -hmm. uh, he moves around well out there, and that's something that even when he wasn't hitting, he was solid defensively. Never took those at-bats with him out into the field. And now that he's doing both well, Fun to watch. Might be tough to get him out of there for a while. I, I wouldn't. I really wouldn't mess with a whole lot right now. Yep. With this team. Here's Ryan Hannigan. Strike at the knees. Hannigan at 
Phelps, 27 years old, out of St. Louis. Went to school in Notre Dame. Was picked out of the 2008 draft by New York. at the knees says Will Little Kevin Kiermeyer is on deck a tapper foul down into the dugout Beautiful evening in New York. It's now 78 degrees, clear skies. Rays have a night game tomorrow and a day game here on Wednesday. Phelps misses wide, two and two. The extended forecast calls for the Possibility of some showers on Wednesday, but we're not going to think about that right now. Take care of that when Wednesday comes. Popped up to the right side. Deshera handles it. One, two, three, go the Rays. To an inning and a half. One nothing, Tampa Bay. Athletic trainer Ron Porterfield with another important day today for the shortstop Unel Escobar. Last time Uni played in the game was Tuesday back at Tropicana Field. Left that game with stiffness in his right shoulder. That tightness really hasn't changed much. There hasn't been much progress and we see him working out today before the game. Not really letting it go with the throws. The Rays were hoping to have an answer before the game today. And then he took some swings and really didn't let it fly too much with the swings either. So Joe Madden said before the game, we're going to give him the full workout today. We need to see some improvement. If not, we may have to do something. The Rays have been playing essentially one man short for the last six days. So we may know something after the game, guys. We'll find out in Rays Live, the postgame show. Back to you. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, on this road trip, not a time when if the Rays are to make a move, if they still have room to make a move, you can't be a man short now and and frankly the team uh, e even if he were healthy I, I'm not sure you'd run him right back out there because 
the team has played better without him and you get a little momentum going here, you might not want to disrupt that. No. And, and you know what? The infield uh, defense has been very good. They've been, they've been more crisp at turning double plays, the few opportunities that they've gotten. They're playing well right now. Um, and certainly, you know, when you watch the, the workout, obviously the playing catch of Yanel Escobar on Sunday, um, you know, that was just a gigantic waste of everybody's time. And then today, those couple of swings that we saw, yeah, that's nowhere near game ready. And yep. so, yeah, you, you cannot be on this road trip, 11 games, 10 days, important opponents, and play a man down. You just, can't, you just cannot do that. The call strike on the 3-1, catching the inside edge. So it's full up now on Ryan McCann. He lifts it into center field for Jennings. That's the first out. Yeah, uh, they might have to take a look at the Ron Porterfield after playing catch the other day with him. He was airing it out a little bit. We were concerned that his shoulder might be uh, a little taxed, but he's shown uh, no signs of that. And right back at it tonight, not favoring that right shoulder at all. Tough guy, though. He is. He's a tough guy. Yep. So you wouldn't expect any let up in uh, his effort. Pitch to Beltron, a little bit outside. One ball, no strikes. It will be interesting to see what the Rays do because even if, even if you wouldn't return him to the lineup immediately, you still need that extra spot available. Ground ball, great stop by Forsyth. Got him. Forsyth continues his great play at second base and made an outstanding play right there. See that he didn't even allow that chopper to third to affect his defense. <laughs> Moving to his right on a very sharply hit ball by Carlos Beltran. You know, this is just why I wouldn't mess with anything right now. These guys are playing at a high level. They're playing with a lot of confidence, a lot of energy. Great player there by Logan. Yeah, they're out there like they wanted. Kelly Johnson takes a strike. We've seen not only the great results, but great effort from this club. Joe Madden will tell you that the effort has always been there looking for results, and he feels he's getting both now. One and one. And it has been uh, something of an inspired bunch recently on the field. And it's been noticeable. Yeah. I mean, if you just watch the game, whether it's on TV or sitting up in the booth where we are, out in the you know the stands, you can feel it. It's just a different feel to this club right now. Two balls and a strike. Two one the count. Three balls and a strike. Three balls and a strike. And there's ball four. Johnson heads to first. Two out pass. Now Brian Roberts. When Archer threw that two hit shutout here last year, he became the first rookie to shut out the Yankees and the Bronx one to nothing since Teddy Hagara did it with the Brewers back in 1985. Pitch is high to Roberts one to zero and. A shutout of any kind. He was the first rookie. Remember left hander Arthur Rhodes, who hung around so long as a reliever, came up as a hard throwing starting pitcher. He shut out the Yankees in his rookie year in the Bronx in 1992. One and one. That 92 team was a little different than the team last year. 
recent years here in New York. That makes Archer's effort a year ago all the more impressive. Two balls and a strike. Roberts, the eighth placed hitter. Yankee hitter in this lineup with the best seasons average against right handed pitching is the guy on deck, Ichiro Suzuki, and he's batting ninth. Just missed. Three and one. Well, two outs and then the walk. And you don't want to see this start happening with Ichiro on deck. Take care of Roberts right here. Pops him up foul. Will it be playable? Longoria after it with a play. And that retires the side. Great play by Logan Forsythe to record the second out on the ground ball by Beltron. We're through two. Rays lead 1-0. Of the updated American League All Star balloting. The All Star game on Fox July 15th. Fan voting on MLB.com continues through July 3rd. And you can see Derek Jeter topping the list at shortstop with 2.9 million and change votes. And there has been some talk about trying to get a Jeter to the. Uh, top of that all-time vote getter list he trails Ken Griffey Jr. right now and that's going to come right down to the wire first pitch Kevin Kiermeyer takes a pitch outside one ball no strikes one ball one strike is down two and one. Hey, don't forget the home run derby will be on ESPN Monday, July 14th at 8 o'clock, as you can see right behind home plate there. Three and one.
Kiermaier ahead in the count. Cut, and that one fouled straight back. Well, here's another one of those guys, you know, since he's come up. Mm -hmm. Six home runs, swinging the bat well, playing with a lot of energy out in right field. Actually, he's homered in his last two games. Yep. He runs hard. He swings hard. Some of those routes he's taken, he better run hard. <laughs> and a high shot deep to right. Suzuki will look up and watch it go. Home run for Kevin Kiermaier. And he can trot around the bases here. The Rays lead two to nothing. Home run number seven for Kiermaier. Homered yesterday. Homered in the game Saturday in Baltimore. How about that? A ball middle in and up. That is a dangerous pitch in this ballpark. And Kevin Kiermaier for the third straight day leaves the yard. And I think that Evan Longoria, the only other Rays rookie to have accomplished that feat. First pitch to Jennings miss. Smiles all around for Kevin Kiermaier. Joyce Homer in the first. Kiermaier has connected in the third. It's always strange too when you get these scouting report on guys and with Kiermaier was you know good defensive outfielder. He's got a strong arm. Don't know if he's going to be able to hit yeah. you know consistently <laughs> really. And he's done a heck of a job in his time here with the Rays. Jennings fouls this one back two and one. Kiermaier has played as if his hair were on fire. He's dousing that hair right now. No, yeah, wouldn't do that. <laughs> Let it burn, baby. <laughs> Fly ball, center field. Ellsbury will come in a bit. That's the first out. Well, a couple of home runs tonight, and in the game tonight at all seeds along, Tires Plus donates. $100 to the Pediatric Cancer Foundation for every Tampa Bay Rays home run televised on Sun Sports. Joyce connecting for number six. Kiermaier connecting for number seven. Here's Zobrist. The other thing about Kiermaier you like it's the underdog story. He was a 31st round draft pick and really got noticed because there were scouts looking at one of his teammates and he just happened to get noticed as an afterthought. Well, the Rays are happy to have picked him as late as they did with what he's done here this year. Yeah, and as a 31st rounder, you're not going to get the benefit of the doubt, which means that each and every step of the way, you're going to have to prove yourself again and again and again. And that's really sort of been his story throughout his history. He's had to do that. And probably there's a long way toward his approach to the game. All out warfare. Yeah. What, you got to do something to stand out. Yeah. And if you play at that kind of a level, their eyes are going to find you. Now you do that and have skill to go with it. Mm -hmm. Guess what? <laughs> You're doing these things in the big leagues now. Sitting on seven home runs. Hitting over 300. Playing a strong outfield. There's ball four. Zobris heads to first. So a walk in front of the red hot Matt Joyce. We'll see Phelps. Can be victimized again by the Rays DH. You know, and Phelps doesn't have any of those pitches that have like late sharp break. He's got a good assortment. This was not one of them. The ball right out over the middle of the plate. Well tagged by Matt Joyce. Over to first. Zobra is back in. Five hits, 12 total bases yesterday for Matt Joyce, tying 
a team record. Well, you have a day like that, and suddenly all is right with the world. Strike and look at the turnaround. Previous nine games, just three runs batted in, four hits, five yesterday, and a home run tonight. And that's why in this game, there's always tomorrow. You come ready to go. You just never know when you're going to have that breakout game. One thing I do know is after those nine games, if you come to the ballpark the next day hanging your head, you're never going to snap on yeah. it. And that is the challenge of this game. You, we were talking about it earlier, six-month-long season. That's on top of the six weeks that you spent in spring training. Yeah, and if you show up the next day hanging your head, you run the risk of wasting that day. It just yeah. makes it worse. One, one more in your rearview mirror. Pitch is in. So you have to be able to stay optimistic and come to the field that day and say, you know what, today's the day. And if it's not, tomorrow. You come to the ball. Today is the day. Mm -hmm. And it's that's the challenge of it. You do not have time to feel sorry for yourself. This game will chew you up and spit you out before you know it. Soberest at first. One and two the count to Matt Joyce. Phelps got to strike two on a changeup. Came back with a fastball in. And Joyce getting time granted by Will Little. I don't think uh, Phelps and McCann could decide on a pitch. I don't even know if there was a sign game. Everybody out there still trying to figure out what they want to do here. Goes away. Two and two. Again to first. So we're right back in there. Come into New York. They've gone 11 and 7 since the 11th of June, second best in the American League to Oakland. The A's 12 and 4 in that stretch. And a full count, too low. So nice job by Joyce. After getting behind in the count. Runner goes on the three two and it's popped left side. And a Fair ball, just fair. That is out number two. Jeter taking care of that with the shift on. He was alone on the left side. And tonight's cold hard facts brought to you by Frostbrew Coors Light. Evan Longoria's had a nice career against the Yankees. This is his 100th game against New York with 26 home runs and 73 runs batted in. In the prior 99 games, hitting 308. If that's any, uh, that, that right there is the answer to the question of Evan Longoria likes playing on the big stage, the big team. I mean, he leads all visiting players with home runs in New Yankee Stadium here with 12. Yep. He's done some serious damage against this New York team. Yeah, that's in 15 games, 12 home runs. Is that a good ratio? <laughs> Fouls it, one and one. One 
One ball, one strike. Two balls and a strike. Rays lead two to nothing. Zobrist at first with two outs. Good cut again by Evan and a foul ball. Two and two. Phelps has not had a great command yet here tonight. And his strike to non strike count fairly even. 58 pitches, 31 strikes, and 27 pitches out of the zone. And Longoria is called out on strikes. He got the call on the corner. So the Rays leave a man, but they pick up. A run on the home run by Kiermaier. A shot to right. The Rays lead 2 0. Game and a couple of solo home runs. Love rock and roll. Don't miss the Joan Jet and the Blackhearts post game concert Saturday, July 12th. First catch the Rays, take on the Blue Jays, and then stick around to see Joan Jet sing some of her biggest hits, including I Love Rock and Roll and Bad Reputation. For tickets, visit RaysBaseball.com slash concerts or call 888 Fan Rays. Chris Archer ready to go to work here in the bottom of the third facing Ichiro Suzuki. Inside, ball no strikes. Ichiro starts to go. That's a strike. One and one. Ichiro. Hitting 297 overall. He's got a little conversation going with Will Little. He thought that was a ball and thought he had held up trying to make his case, but the count stands at one and one. And there's a strike on the inside corner. You can see him belt out of there, moving away from the plate, accentuating. At least the idea that that pitch might have been off the plate in. 
Well, he wants to get a head start anyway. That's really the, the mechanics of his swing. He'll start to open up and either look to pull the ball with him or slap the ball the other way, depending on where it's thrown. But Archer, that pitch, there was nothing much you were going to do with that. And then you just try to sell it like you were bailing. But Chris has been good with that pitch. That front door two-seam fastball to the lefties. And that one in, and it got him. Ichiro hit by the pitch. The yep. Yankees will get their leadoff man on. So many times the pitcher will try to make a follow-up pitch even nastier, and he did not need to do that. The 1-1 pitch was good enough. He tried to make it nastier on one and two. He yanked it too far in, and it cost him a hit batter. the fourth hitter that uh, Archer has hit this year. So Ichiro's at first and here's the top of the order Brett Gardner. Ichiro's back in. Well now with Ichiro on base Gardner and Cheater and then Ellsbury coming up and Gardner and Ellsbury have given Archer a little trouble in Ellsbury's case more than a little he's given him a lot of trouble. A little bit wide with a fastball. One and oh. Well, the one thing that Chris Archer always needs to guard against is when things don't go like he would like you know a misplay in the field a walk a hit batter like Suzuki is just to calm down and not let the inning start to spiral on especially with the hitters that you talked about coming to the plate that's a fair ball up the line Kiermaier hustles into the corner Ichiro is going to be waved to the plate he'll score and all the way to third goes Gardner the ball got by Kiermaier out in right field, and that's going to cost 90 feet. I think if Kevin gets to this ball and is able to stop it, then you keep runners on second and third more than likely because there's nobody out. But with that ball starting to circle around the wall out there in right field, right up the line, that ball hit sharply by Gardner, by Loney. The ball into the corner and then right there. Boy, the ball gets away from him, and that's 90 more feet. The Gardner makes it a two to one game with Ichiro scoring. Fifth triple for Gardner. Here's Jeter. Down and away, and Archer putting a little something extra on that. And the race piece. I want to go out and settle him down. Somebody. That's what you're always nervous about. One and two on Suzuki. He yanks a two seamer, hits him. Just don't want this thing to spiral. And you're right. Jim Hickey has already moved to take a spot. A little ground ball to the right side to score the run. Gardner crosses the plate. Jeter's ground ball ties the game. It's 2 2. Well, what's done is done. Okay, you're back to zero. You got nobody on base. Just close this inning out and let the you know, your offense go back to work. They've been swinging the bats well. And that's what Chris needs to do right here. A couple of deep breaths. The guy that Jacoby Ellsbury, you don't want to be having your mind floating around when facing him. Already 8 out of 11 against you in his career. Ellsbury singled his first time up. Came into the game hitting 285. Strike one. O oh, two. Mm -hmm. 
think he's put the leadoff man on the hit batter. They've turned that into a run on the triple by Gardner. Gardner scored on Jeter's ground ball. Just in off the plate. The 0 2 pitch again. Close. Boom. Very close. Yeah, you know what? You absolutely could have, should have called that one. Can't throw it much better. So, with that foul ball, he'll make yet another delivery to Ellsbury. Tapper foul. And Kelleher, the first base coach, makes the pickup. Two balls, two strikes. That was a great shot of Matt Joyce in the Rays dugout. The thought of hitting never far from his mind, especially serving as the DH. Well, you've got to stay sharp. That's the challenge of that position, not being out in the field to stay in the game. you got to find other ways to keep your mind occupied, to stay loose, to be ready to go when it's your turn to hit again. And that's not for everybody. I mean, you would think that a lot of guys would be running to, you know, get in line to sign up to be a DH. All you got to do is hit three or four times a game. But there are a lot of guys that do not like that role. Would rather be out in the field in between at bats and not in the dugout. Interesting how that works for hitters. Full count pitch, and now there's ball four. You know, there's some guys. Who miss being in the field as you point out because they feel like they're not part of the game. Yep. There are other guys who don't mind at all. They love the idea. I'll just go up and hit. The, the, yeah. I, I mean, it's different for everybody. Yeah. I, I remember getting an opportunity when I was a rookie playing with the uh, the California Angels at that time. And and Lee Smith was our closer. Yeah. And uh, he would sleep yeah. until like the bottom of the seventh. Yeah. You just put him in a room, he'd be done. Yeah. Wake him up in the eighth. He'd get a couple small arm weights, kind of move himself around, get down there by the ninth, and if it was time to go pitch, he'd go pitch, and if not, he called it a night. Why worry about things you can't control? That was his approach, and some of those guys who prefer that mindset as a DH, it's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Go up, swing the bat. I can't control <laughs> everything else that's going on out there. I'll, I'll take care of hitting. In this case, Lee Smith did a pretty good job of closing games out. After a visit from the Rays pitching coach Jim Hickey, Archer now set to face Mark Teixeira. There goes the runner. The pitch is a strike throw. Galloway safe. Boy, that was close, and it appeared that Driver might be ready to call him out, and then the safe sign. There was a deep job. I was with you. I was with you. It looked like Schreiber was about to punch him and then threw those hands up safe. It was close. The jump not as good as Ellsbury can get. It does look like he got in there safely. See with the shift on Longoria taking the throw. And Ellsbury has his 22nd stolen base of the year. Well, I think Ellsbury thought that he was being rung up out there with his reaction. We saw that in the first shot. One and one. We'll take another look at 
That play around second base. He's in there. Here's the tag. Yeah. <laughs> you saw Elberg change his attitude quickly. Foul back now one and two. Boy, you can see some of the aspects of this inning be a little worrisome for Joe Madden and Jim Hickey. Well, it, it, listen, it, it's what happened uh, was that start in Houston. There, were the, there was a play at first base with Chris Archer, and he wasn't able to catch the ball. Uh, that would have been the third out out of the inning, and then after that, Houston jumped all over him in a very short outing. Ended up being just a three-plus inning outing for Chris. And we've seen that. When things start to go south, sometimes they go south in a hurry. And a good pitch there to get to Shara for out number two. You know, it seems to me, VA, and you can speak to this, you've been there where you're in a tough spot. And, and you mentioned about trying to make an even better pitch that got him into trouble with Ichiro. It's hard not to try to make a better pitch psychologically where... You're thinking, well, all right, I'm really going to put great effort into this. And the best thing is just go do your thing. But if you do that, you're almost afraid, well, I'm not giving it my best effort. And there's that fine line out there. Th that's th know thyself. Those yeah. are th that's how you learn about yourself and how to pitch at this level. And you've got to keep reminding yourself that the previous pitch on the 1-1 fastball was perfectly placed with a little bit of comeback movement right on the inside corner. There's no way to make that pitch better. You just cannot make it better. But the mindset is, if I can do that, I can make this one move even more. I can start it further in off the plate and make it move more. And, and you know, listen, we've all been guilty. Anybody that's pitched at, at really almost at any level, you know, where you're mixing pitches mm -hmm. are guilty of that. Yep. If that breaking ball down in a way was good for strike two, watch this one for strike three. And that's the wrong way to go about it because most of the time it doesn't work like you would like. Well, you, you become so competitive that you have to control that. Pitch is high. It's one and one now to McCann. Yeah, now, if you want to say to yourself, okay, that breaking ball down in a way was good. How about this one for strike three is going to be better. I'm going to move it further off the plate. Mm -hmm. Okay. The same pitch just change your sight line where you're going to aim for it. Don't try and make it break more and make the break bigger and nastier. That is when it usually doesn't work. And that's where you have to say look, if you think you can do it better then do it better but don't do it better by trying. Yeah, it's almost that, uh, that mindset that that the harder I try or the faster I go, the farther behind I get. There's an equilibrium to applying talent and effort. Yep. 2-1 to count on Brian McCann. Upstairs, 3-1. and one. Game tied, 2-2. Two -two. It's turned into an extended inning for Archer, and it started when he hit Ichiro with a 1-2 pitch. Three-one. Fly ball, center field. Jennings right there to make the catch. So damage done. Two runs score to tie it. We're going to go to the fourth 2-2 ball game.
Ball game. It's now time for you to tweet your photo using hashtag Sunsports fan photo for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming game broadcast brought to you by AT&T. David Phelps against Chris Archer. We're through three innings. The Rays have two runs, three hits. The Yankees, two runs and two hits. Rays have hit two home runs. Getting round trippers from Matt Joyce and Kevin Kiermeyer. Here's James Loney. Loney, Geyer, and Forsythe. Fly ball the other way, and Gardner, the left fielder, is there. Maloney goes after the first pitch and skies out. That's what late movement on a pitch will do. James Loney saw a fastball elevated out over the plate that he thought he was going to be able to drive, and at the last minute, that ball just ran from the barrel of the bat down towards the end of the bat. Watch this right here. This late right there. I got up, oh, and it just that little subtle movement at the end, a couple of inches, takes it from the barrel to the end. And instead of being able to drive that ball with authority, it's a soft fly ball to left. Yeah, that's a great observation, and you see how effective that can be. Yeah, because if that if that fastball was straight as an arrow, Loney would have been into that one. Yeah, with some, I mean, he would have hit it deep out there. Want to know the count to Brandon Geyer? Takes it for a strike, shortening on the bat. Geyer is one of the hitters who's had a chance to play and has responded with the Rays' offense reviving. Down to third, Kelly Johnson makes the throw. Four pitches, two outs in the fourth. Similar to the second inning when Phelps made only 10 pitches in a 1 2 3 frame. And David Phelps, you know, an interesting pitcher here uh, in this Yankees team. I mean, he's done a lot of work out of the bullpen, he's gotten a number of starts. I mean, even his career against the Rays eight games, four starts. That seems to be what he is just about every year. First pitch strike to Forsythe. You know, he started this year out of the bullpen, moved into the starting rotation on May the 5th in making his 10th, now 11th start. Half of his starts, he's given up two earned runs or fewer. He can one just, one. It's just about anything that Joe Girardi asks of him. The Yankees had hoped to get uh, another full season. Good year out of CC Sabathia. He's on rehab assignment in the minor leagues. Michael Pineda, the right hander, starting to throw. So there are two down there. Nova. Yeah. Well, and that's why the, the three guys they have in there right now Phelps. Vidal Nuno, who the Rays will see on Wednesday. Chase Whitley, who threw last night. Line drive caught by Roberts. And the Rays are up and down. One, two, three. High game, two, two.
Five two two. And we'll take a look at our Southern Chevy dealers storyline. The Yankees investing four hundred and thirty eight million dollars in the last offseason. They've certainly gotten their money's worth from Masahiro Tanaka. In fact, he's really stabilized their pitching situation. They added Jacoby Ellsbury, and he's been good for them. Brian McCann on the catch, and the veteran Carlos Beltran has been battling some injuries with his elbow and his forearm recently. Now that, that's what you wonder what this team's going to look like in a handful of years. You know, not a lot of glowing reports about what's coming down the pike in the farm system. It's a team that absolutely is aged. Well, their, their uh, operation model has been free agency. You get some of the veteran guys going to run a higher payroll, but that's been their approach. Beltron takes the pitch and it's a bit high. They're going to have a lot of money tied up in the guys whose best years are behind them. And that's just what you're going to have to go with. Then you run the risk of injury, long periods of time without them, and not a whole lot to be able to fill in for them. Yeah. And that's what history tells you. I mean, you're going to get players with a proven track record, but. The longer they're in the major leagues and year by year they come closer and closer to injury and you'll find more and more of that as, as nature would have it. The more wear and tear the more injury you're likely to run into and that happens over and over again. But you think about this Yankee team if they didn't have Ellsbury. And if they didn't have Tanaka, where would they be? 2-2 Two -two the count to Beltron. There's a shot deep to right. Down the line. Foul ball. Beltron got under that one. They can get cozy down that line. 3-14. And that was just foul. On the ground, Forsyth in the middle of the right side of the infield handles that one. So one away. You go up and down the lineup. And here is the Yankee lineup with the age of each player. Nobody under 30. Yeah, and, and you know what? And look at the two that are. McCann and Ellsbury, obviously two big pickups this winter. So they're going to play a, a, a big role in this team in the future. And Gardner, they signed yep. him to a deal. That's right. He's 30. Derek Jeter. Playing his final year now 40. One and one the count to Kelly Johnson. Well, this Yankee bullpen has been pretty solid. Big strikeout bullpen. But the starting rotation, you know, you wonder how much CC Sabathia has left. Kuroda, he's nearing the end. Tanaka has been a godsend for this team. Pineda, if he's, is he going to be able to come back and, and contribute in a meaningful way? More scythe here for the ground ball from Johnson. Two outs in the fourth. Now the bullpen has been good, and Dylan Matanzas has stepped up and has become a major force in their bullpen. I remember seeing him. We saw him when he was young. It was a couple of years ago when he was just starting to break into the big leagues in September. And he couldn't hit the broad side of a barn. Balls all over the place. And now he's become an untouchable almost coming out of that pen. Oh, 
Brian Roberts. Archer got Roberts on a pop foul handled by Longoria the first time around. Goes off that pitch down. Tell you, Archer can make some great pitches. That first pitch was a ball, but that pitch was down and running away at 96. I mean, really? Lifted into left center field. That's Jennings, and he makes the catch. One, two, three, go the Yankees. We go to the fifth, tied 2-2. Two, two. The Florida Department of Transportation who reminds you to drive sober or get pulled over. And by Deliver Us From Evil in theaters July 2nd. Beautiful night in the Bronx for the Rays and the Yankees open a three game series. Great to have you looking in tonight. fans here at Yankee Stadium. Ryan Hannigan will open the inning against David Phelps. Hannigan, Kiermaier, and Jennings. Got him on a pop up to the right side his first time. Jammed him with a pitch. Rolls a fastball for strike one. High shot, pretty well tagged. Ellsbury back though not yet to the track in center making the catch that is how big it can play here at Yankee Stadium out in left center field where it is 399 feet on that left center field wall because Ryan Hannigan hit that ball hard and it didn't even get to the warning track you want to put it out in that direction you've got to pop it good. Brings up Kevin Kiermeyer. Kiermeyer homered in the third inning. 
it is out to right and it's a bit cozier there than it is to the canyon in left center field. There's a strike our Toyota trend now with Kiermaier connecting second rookie in Rays history to hit a home run in three consecutive games. Evan Longoria did it twice in his rookie season in 2008. One and one is the home run tonight came on a 3 2 pitch. On the location by Phelps wanted it away. It came back middle in. Actually, it never came back. <laughs> this one fouled off the end of the bat. It's one and two. Kiermaier out on strikes this time. Got him out in front. Two gone. That's three strikeouts for Phelps. Now retired seven in a row. Desmond Jennings. Inside, one ball, no strikes. Took the lead with a run in the first. They got a run in the third. The Yankees countered with two runs in the bottom of the third. Three balls, no strikes. Gave up a walk to Zobrist in the third inning. The only free pass he's given up. Zobrist on deck with Joyce behind him. Two outs in the inning. And there's ball four. Puts Jennings aboard. Ben Zobrist heads to the plate. Well, if I'm Desmond Jennings here, I'm going. His game has become stagnant at two to two. There's two outs here in the fifth inning. Phelps in limited innings has given up six stolen bases this year. And you'd like that leadoff man to be a game changer. Here's a chance to be a game changer. He's done one part of the act. He's gotten on base and draws a peg over there from Phelps. Time. Zobris coming out of the Baltimore series. He was six for 18 in the series, including three hits, three extra base hits yesterday. He takes a pitch for a strike. has had a couple of high pitch count innings but also two very low pitch count innings about to make his 80th pitch of the night 
And that's in there. Strike two. So he quickly gets the jump on Zobrist. And a couple of nasty pitches with late movement. One moving into Ben, and then that two seam fastball starting it off in and then moving away back to the inside corner. And still no movement from Desmond Jennings down there at first base. Now he goes. The pitch is wide. The throw in time. Desmond caught stealing. Jeter put the tag on him. And the Rays are out in the top of the fifth inning. Jennings walk. Caught stealing. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Tied 2-2. inning let's take another look at that well the one thing that you want to do on the crossover step here you want to gain a lot of ground and you want to stay low like he is what ends up happening is Jennings does not get gain a lot of ground in fact that right foot starts with a full step and he immediately stands straight up and when you do that you cost yourself precious hundreds of a second and that's what allows this play to be made by McCann and Derek Jeter. Yeah, and if you look at that crossover step, his left foot, a, a short step. Here's Ichiro, ground ball to second, and Foresight is right there to take care of Ichiro Suzuki. Well, yeah, and here's the problem, Dwayne. You know, you want to clear that hip, that, that right hip, and the first step be with this. But actually, you're going to see that the first step comes there, and it goes backwards. So you start with the right foot going backwards, uh, then a crossover. That costs you time. And then Desmond immediately is standing upright early. And all of that it leads to the final result, which is right here. Yep. Because here's a guy with speed yep. and quickness. And, and, and that's why not all fast guys are great base stealers. And, and that's where it, technique really plays a role on your jump, on your start. Yep. And so he not only started with the wrong leg moving first, but it moved back towards first mm -hmm. before then the left leg crossed over. That, that's too much wasted time. That and the fact that he came out of his stance, came more upright, no good. One strike to count to Gardner. He used to spend a, a lot of time talking to Tony Womack. Mm -hmm. In the National League, I considered myself a base stealer. Well, yeah, well listen, you know, that no, you, know, you pinch ran, yeah. pitchers over there, yeah. they'd utilize them, and you got to be a good base runner. No, and, and Tony Womack was a, a tremendous base runner, and he would give you a little insight on how to, you know, even cut in the bag, you know, cutting your angle mm -hmm. to try to, you know, quicken your time from one bag to another going first to third. 
and, and, and also how to get a good jump off of first, and if you're going to steal, how to do it in the most efficient manner. One and two, the count on Brett Gardner. Out of play. So the Rays and the Yankees remain tied. You know, those are little things, and especially with the Rays offense. The nature of the way this team is built, the idea is pitching, protected with good defense, and then generate some offense somehow. Those little things are crucial to a team that's built the way this one is meant to be built. Gardner out on strikes. Well, the lows never stop improving. Let's take a look at the, the Rays total in a single month. You know, this is a, kind of a race now between the Rays and the Chicago Cubs team of 2002. This is tops in the American League with the three strikeouts they've added tonight. You talk about a race to the finish. They've passed the Tigers and the Indians. How about them doing it the same year last year, the same month, playing in the same division? Yep. <laughs> the pitch inside to Derek Jeter. Well, potentially Archer is a guy to have on the mound if you're looking to run a strikeout total. Well, he can gobble them up. I'll tell you what, it gets into that Rays bullpen. They do a great job also. Peter with a ground ball to Forsythe. Quick inning here in the fifth. One, two, three, go the Yankees. We move into the sixth. Two, two tie. Summary as we move into the sixth, the Rays open the scoring. Matt Joyce did it again in the first inning, a home run coming off yesterday's five hit, two home run outing. Not to be outdone, Kevin Kiermeyer hit his seventh home run of the year to begin the third before the Yankees scored a couple in the bottom of the inning. Ichiro was hit by a pitch. Gardner tripled him home on this shot by first. And back into the right field corner. Gardner scored on Jeter's patented ground ball to the right side. That got the run home to tie it. And we are 2 2, 2 3 0 for the Rays, 2 2 0 for the Yankees. And ben Zobris will begin the sixth inning with Joyce and Longoria to follow. Ben was at the plate in the fifth when Jennings was caught trying to steal second. So here's Ben to lead off the sixth. Breaking ball, strike one. A 
1 1 count. Two balls, one strike. There's Joyce on deck. Phelps worked five innings his last outing made 94 pitches and a season's high 115 pitches the outing before that. And he stays wide again to Zobrist. So then up in the count here it's three and one. Count full. Close pitch here by Phelps. Right on the inside corner. Everything else away from Ben until that one. And there is ball four. Lead off walk. Now that could that could come back to haunt Phelps. Uh, you don't want to walk people to lead off innings in a tie game. No, and not with Matt Joyce coming to the plate, but even Longoria, Loney, Geyer, that is uh, not the recipe. You're moving into the second half of this game. Lead off walks, not good. Hopefully the Rays can cash in here. Joyce Homer in the first, pop to Jeter in the third shift is on. Pitch is low. Jeter the lone defender on the left side of the infield for the Yankees and McCann's out to have a word with Phelps. When well, you're trying to head this off at the pass you've already walked his over us. You don't want to fall too far behind Joyce because you don't want to walk him and you don't also want to give in especially with Longoria. We talked about what he's done to this team. He swung the bat well in this stadium. Joy's now three of eleven against Phelps. The double and a home run among the three hits. It's pop foul. Carries back into the stands and it's one and one. Joyce and Kiermeyer have hit the home runs. In the bullpen for the Yankees. This will be the 90th pitch of the night for Phelps. And it's a strike. That 1 1 pitch takes the count to 1 and 2. And that was a good change up there by Phelps. Put this in a really good spot here. Another conference between McCann and Phelps. The action down in that bullpen we saw Matt Thornton, the lefty, and Adam Warren, the right hander. Two and two.
Evan Longoria on deck. Obris with his lead. And strike three call. Joyce not happy. Well, Matt Joyce was victimized by a couple of good pitches. And right here, this one right in the same spot as that changeup. It's a borderline pitch, but the Changeup was called, and this looked like a almost a backdoor cutter right at the kneecaps. Here's Longoria. Evan tried to check. They want the appeal, and Marquez says that's a strike. He went around. Well, that's that late movement in. Much Evan thinks he's going to get a fastball out over, realizing late movement, and you see it just cannot hold up. By the way, I like the uh, like the batting gloves coming from Evan. Those are aggressive. <laughs> Mustard yellow. Yeah. You know, first it was the hair. Popped up toward the stands. Deshera runs out of room. Strike two. You know, went mohawk and then dyed it. Yep. Bleach blonde for the World Cup. And now going with the yellow, overriding yellow. Looks like goalie gloves. <laughs> He's going way World Cup. Yeah. Maybe he'll come under the bridge with me tomorrow to watch like the to game. To watch it? Yeah. That would be great viewing, watching you guys view. <laughs> Especially if there's a goal. Yeah. Just don't get too far under the bridge when you guys jump up. <laughs> and no mouths full of ice cream. No. Pitch away. One ball, two strikes. Zobar says walk. He's at first with one out. One and two the count on Evan Longoria. And a great place for Longoria to hit. Here in the stadium. Two and two now. Pitch count creeping toward 100. Silver is back in. It's a foul ball. Foley still with good hands down there. The Rays third base coach. And a tie game here. Phelps trying to be careful with Longoria. In too close, and now the count is full. It's James Loney on deck.
Longoria loves to hit here. But he's just one of nine against Phelps. Over to first and Zobrist is back in. Well, and interesting here, if they stay with the pitch that they were going to go with, they're going to try to come in again on Evan. And with that late movement, that, that you know high risk pitch here, going to have trouble keeping that ball on the plate. So he better hope that Evan is going to swing at it. Runner goes, and the pitch is popped to the right side. Shallow right field for Ichiro. Longoria pops out to shallow right on that pitch. Two outs. Here's what's coming up for tomorrow on Rays Live. The pregame show presented by your Gulf Coast Honda dealers. We'll hear from David Price and feature on the Rays inside the park home runs. David Price had some interesting things to say about what he's uh, going through right now and his reaction to it all. Now James Loney, all of that on Ray's live the pregame tomorrow. So we'll be with you at 6:30. One count now on Loney. Ground ball off the mid of Teixeira. They scramble after it and in head first goes Loney. And I think Teixeira gave Loney a little more credit for the speed that he does not have. Yes, he did. And that's even a play where Brian Roberts takes it and shovels. Phelps was there to receive the throw. And you're absolutely right. That ball gets away from Teixeira, but because it was hit so sharply, they still had time. That ball just just off the edge of that glove and out of the reach of the hand. They had him, and you can see the look on Phelps' face. So men at first and second with two outs, and that's it for David Phelps. Go when the Rays feature their flex pack, save big and select any three, six, or nine games. Introductory prices start at just $49. Call 888 Fan Rays or visit RaysBaseball.com today. Phelps, 101 pitches. 
five and two thirds four hits two runs with a man on as he leaves three walks and four strikeouts Boy, that's a tough way to have to leave a game on that ball hit by Loney and Adam Warren on to face Brandon Geyer. Pitch to Geyer is a strike. Yeah, especially because if Mark Teixeira just picks up that ball with any kind of urgency and turns real quick, they had a play. Phelps had the bag covered, and I think he just assumed that Loney was going to beat it because of the internal clock in his head, but it was running a little bit too hot. One and one now. The Rays. A little bit of a break there with Zobrist at second and Loney at first on an infield hit. Ground ball, third base. Johnson steps on the bag for the force play to retire the side. Rays leave two, do not score, and we're tied 2 2. of the sixth inning practice your jump shots with the Anel Escobar basketball set presented by Sun Sports to kids 14 and under while supplies last the basketball set available when the Rays take on the Blue Jays Sunday July 13th as part of family fun day presented by the Tampa Bay Times for tickets visit RaysBaseball.com or call 888 fan Rays. Beautiful night in New York. Opening game of this three game series. Jacoby Ellsbury to lead off the bottom of the inning. First pitch from Chris Archer is upstairs. The ball and no strikes. Archer. Four and five overall this year and as we mentioned at the outset he has had a history of grand success here at Yankee Stadium big cut to miss but he has had trouble with Ellsbury in a Red Sox uniform and now in a Yankee uniform Ellsbury has been on twice tonight and is now eight of eleven lifetime against him. strike one and two 
Archer wins in his first four career games against the Yankees. All of those starts. Looking for number five tonight. Last pitcher to win his first five games against the New York team in the American League, Walter Johnson. The Yankees weren't even the Yankees then. Ellsbury out on a pop to third. That was back in 1907 and 1908. Walter Johnson, the great Walter Johnson, pitching for the Washington Senators. And he beat the New York Highlanders back then. Mark Teixeira. Broken bad and a liner that's going to be over the head of Forsyth who is out there in shallow right with the shift. Kiermaier had to make the pickup. I'm going to tell you, you, you can't imagine how much, how little ground that Mark Teixeira has to work with right there to get it over the head of Forsyth and in front of Kevin Kiermaier out there in right field. I mean, here is your shift. There is Forsyth. There's Kiermaier here. And he is able to drop it right in between. Very, very rarely will you see that happen. Brian McCann pitched to him as a strike. ball toward the line and left Geyer on the move and that's going to be a foul ball and out of play stands jut out toward that foul line and that one out of reach and returns to the plate two fly balls to center field far out of McCann. Strike three call. McCann puts up a bit of a squawk. It's the second out. Two seamer that's going to be close. Close enough. Good pitch there by Chris Archer. Say, when he makes that pitch and he keeps those mechanics smooth, doesn't try to do too much, that's a devastating pitch because the left handed hitter just cannot pull the trigger. Too much velocity and too much movement late in the trajectory of that pitch. Well, John. Just for one and bounces it foul. Very good save there by Ryan Hannigan on a ball behind him. Something he's got a backhand and keep that runner at first base. Two and one. Johnson on deck. Two 
upstairs. Takes it to three balls and a strike. Four strikeouts tonight for Archer. And this one back off the mound, deflecting off Archer's foot, it appeared. And that's a base hit. And let's see if Chris is all right. That ball hit him square. And that may have gotten him even a little bit further up on that leg. It was so quick. We'll have to take a look at it on it. Slow it down a little bit, but listen to the sound. Maybe on the inside of that right shoe, Dwayne. I think you were right. And maybe hopefully we caught him more on the the heel, the padding of that shoe, and not up where the ankle is. 99.3 coming back off the bat at Archer. See Archer assuring Joe Madden that he is all right. Appeared to get him on the left foot. Yes, it did. And on the inside of that heel. And you just hope it's down by the tread, down by the spikes. But he's responded. Paul Harker out there with Joe Madden to make sure he was okay. Now the hitters, Kelly Johnson. And that pitch is close. Ball one, says Will Little. Share at second now with Beltron at first. Lifted high, shallow center. Jennings there, and the side is retired. Two hits, two left, no runs. Two two tie onto the seventh. In the Bronx, you watch the Rays battle the Astros June 21st wearing their 1970s original jerseys. And now you can own a piece of that game. Bid on MLB authenticated game used jerseys, hats, pants, and more. All proceeds benefit the Rays Baseball Foundation and Moffitt Cancer Center. Visit RaysBaseball.com slash TBTC to place your bid.
Logan Forsyth will open the seventh. Adam Warren, the right hander, on the mound. First pitch is high. One ball, no strikes. Warren took over, got the final out in the sixth. It's too high. 2 0. Oh. On deck, Ryan Hannigan. Warren with this fastball, he'll get it up there close to the mid 90s. Consistently at 94. Yankees have a lot of big arms that come out of this bullpen. 94 with that strike. You know, they lead the major leagues with 291 strikeouts, and the way that it's constituted right now, the guys they have out there right now, they are averaging just about 11.4 strikeouts per nine innings. That's a power pen. And this guy can give you a full complement of pitches as well. He'll go fastball, slider, he's got a change up, go curveball. Side takes a rip and fouls it back. Morgan is grounded out and lined out tonight. Hit strikeout on the fastball and Warren hit 96 with that one. Yeah, they, you know that that extra little bit of velocity in that location made it tough for Forsythe because he cut down his swing. The swing was quick enough, but that ball right there was able to jump up and over the bat and at 96 miles an hour, just not quick enough to get there. Ryan Hannigan. That's a strike. a tough pitch. Yeah, right now with these right-handed hitters, Warren, you talked about the four that he can choose from. Right now, he's staying with the fastball and the slider, and that's probably the right call for the hitters that he is facing. Remember what a fastball used to be, 87? His yes. last slider was just 87. Right. <laughs> Up the right side, foul. Still two strikes. I remember 87 very well. Many, many times. Such a great year. <laughs> it's right after Appetite for Destruction <laughs> came out. Actually, I think that may have been the year that it came out, 87, 88. <laughs> great album. Timeless. <laughs> One ball, two strikes. Kevin Kiermeyer on deck. This game has been tied at two since the third. We're in the top of the seventh. Johnson from third base. Hannigan's out number two.
Kevin Kiermeyer approaches the plate. His home run in the third gave the Rays their second run. Well, he has been hot. Three straight games with the home run for Kevin. Big hug there from David Price. I bet you he'd get even a bigger hug if he's able to pop one out of here right now. Break this tie. Seen hard stuff from Warren. 95 96 on the fastball, upper 80s on the slider. There's a base hit. On a slider, he takes it up the middle. Makes a big turn at first, as he generally does. And Kiermeyer's aboard with his second hit of the night. Well, now's when you start to think about maybe Kiermeyer putting him on the move. Coming around back to Desmond Jennings. Here's the pitch right there, working its way down in a way, and he's able to reach it, punch it right back up the middle. Now the top of the order. Kiermaier, one out of three running. Ball one to Desmond Jennings. Over to first, Kiermaier back in head first. Jennings with a hit and three at bats against Warren. It's low. Can came up ready to fire. Two balls, no strikes. And just a little bit wide and a check in time by Jennings. Takes the count to three and nothing. Yeah, and now Warren has put himself into a little bit of a fix here. He's got to come out over the plate. You do not want to walk Jennings and put the go ahead run out at second base. Three zero, and he just walked him on four pitches. Jennings walks for the second time tonight, and that pushes Kiermaier up to second. Well, now just about anything to the outfield is going to score Kiermaier. The way that he runs, there's two outs to be running on contact. And ben is 0 for one with two walks tonight. Hit a home run in the fifth inning. Yesterday in Baltimore, one of his three hits, he also had two doubles. And the pitch is wide. He tried to start that one wide and back door at one ball, no strikes. Trying to be perfect with every pitch, and he's just not able to, been, to find the strike zone. But low, blocked by McCann. And six straight pitches out of the zone as he gave up the base hit to Kiermaier. Well, and you know, he's trying every pitch to try and find one that he can get into the zone. And right now, I don't care if it's the changeup, the breaking balls, the fastball, he's not been able to get anything in there. And he's really pitching himself into a hole right here. Two out threat by the Rays. And he gets this one in. Two and one. I don't know how in it was. 
Backdoor breaking ball. Mm, that wasn't in. <laughs> that's how in it wasn't. It just wasn't. Boy, that's a tough call. Yeah. He got a big break there, and he hadn't been throwing any strikes at all. There's ball three. Three and one. Matt Joyce on deck. Hands going to head to the mound. Phelps worked five and two thirds. Warren got the final out in the sixth. Got the first two out here in the seventh inning. Gave up the base hit to Kiermaier. Walked to Jennings. And he's three and one to Zobrist. So the bases are loaded. They are loaded for Matt Joyce, and out comes Larry Rothschild, pitching coach. He really has not thrown a strike in nine pitches. Yeah, and yet you're gonna, you know, you're gonna have to try to give him a little pep talk here and then trust him against Matt Joyce. He gives out a two out hit to Kevin Kiermeyer and then basically starts to implode on himself. What should have been two straight and four pitch walks. Matt coming off yesterday's five hit performance, a third inning home run to right center yesterday. Hit a two run home run in the seventh inning. Came against the left-hander Mattis in a home run first time up tonight. Bases loaded, two outs in the seventh. And he goes after the pitch, fouling it away, strike one. Matt Joyce going up there with the idea. I know he's been out of the zone, but he can't afford to be now. And so he's going to throw me something out over the plate, and if he does, I'm going to be ready to swing the bat. Took a really good cut at that breaking ball there by Warren. The 0 1. Down and in. No breaking stuff. Kiermeyer at third. Jennings at second. Silverist at first. Cut the miss. Some nice downward movement there. And it's a good thing because Matt had another good swing, 83 miles an hour on this breaking ball. Aggressive cut by Matt. And it just dipped a little bit low. And now you're down to your last strike. One and two. Two balls, two strikes. Pressure spot here. The question is, is he going to abandon the breaking ball? He has it so far to Joyce. No. 25 pitches in the inning. 2-2. Two -two. Ground ball chopped to the right side. Roberts got him. He went to the fastball. Joyce chops to second, and the Rays leave him loaded. We're still tied 2-2.
We welcome you back to the Bronx where the Rays and the Yankees have opened this three-game series. 2-2 still as we go to the bottom of the seventh. Joyce and Kiermaier have homered for the Rays. Gardner drove in a run with a triple and then scored on a ground ball by Jeter. We've been tied since the third. And there's Chris Archer. Archer, 86 pitches through six innings of two-run, four-hit baseball, two walks, and four strikeouts. We talked about his quest to get his fifth win over the Yankees, and now Walter Johnson over uh, 1907 and 1908. The only pitcher to do that. Archer came into this game 4-0 with an earned run average against the Yankees of 1.26. In the last 100 years, only two pitchers have won their first four games against the Yankees with an earned run average lower than that. Mike Cuellar, veteran lefty with Baltimore, did it over 1969 and 70. He was 4-0 with a 0 Point seven five. He had that great screwball. And Jim Palmer of the Orioles in 65 and 66 was 4-0 with a 123. Two of those wins came in relief. Brian Roberts, the former Baltimore Oriole, leads off the bottom of the seventh. Takes a pitch high. One ball, no strikes. Broken bat, a little popper, going to drop into center out of the reach of Zobras. And Roberts is aboard on a broken bat single. Now, just strong enough to get it outside of the reach of Ben Zobras. And what you start to worry about now is you see this pitch up close, working down and away. Good pitch by Chris Archer. There's, you can't make that pitch much better. Brian Roberts is just able to get it elevated. And drop it in, but now, you know, you, you start to wonder. Brian Roberts put him in motion. Suzuki, a guy at the plate that can handle the bat. New York may try and manufacture something here. Well, it was the bottom of the order. Suzuki, who started their two run third when he was hit by a one two pitch. He shows the bunt. That's a strike. See, these hitters, when that pitch comes out of Chris's hands, they see it in off the plate. And so you give up on it, but that action is so late and there's so much of it, it takes it right back to the inside corner. The fact that he can do that at the velocity in which he does. First, Roberts back in. Well, you remember what a nemesis Roberts was to the Rays when he played for the Orioles. Well, here he is leading off the seventh for the Yankees with that broken bat base hit. Same thing. He just transferred it over here to the Bronx. Strike the count. Action in the Rays bullpen. Brad Boxberger. There's the bunt. Hannigan looks to second, but he'll go to first. Roberts up to second in scoring position on the bunt. The sacrifice by Ichiro Suzuki. And I think initially Ryan Hannigan had designs and desires to take out that lead runner at second base, Ryan Roberts. Watch him take a look. He's going to certainly contemplate it here. Ah, nope. Take the sure thing.
Brett Gardner. Strike at the knees, fastball. They get the count running in his favor. First 90 pitches. Two ball game. One and one the count. He was shortening on the bat that he offered. The Rays want the appeal. Ted Barrett says he did not go. Got the bat back. Yeah, he pulled it back late, which was not an easy maneuver. Because Gardner, you're right, he came out of there like he may have been bunting for a hit. And then watch him pull this thing back right here. Tries to lay it back on that left shoulder. All these decisions with the pitches moving at the velocity they are, you got to make them quick. Two one pitch. That's a strike. A little took a beat there before he made the call and then was emphatic. And he has Gardner barking. Well, the, there was no rhythm to that call by Little. No, no rhythm at all. Watch how delayed this call is. And that right here is more of a punch out call than it is a strike call. Yep. Because if that's your strike call, I don't know what you're going to be able to pull out of your hat when you want to punch a guy out. Go all Enrico Palazzo on him. Well, that was a scroll down memory lane to Frank Pulley. This one is outside, three and two. Robert's second. One out. Full count on Gardner. Gardner fouls this. And here's where Gardner is really tough. He'll foul pitches away and extend counts. Yeah, he could be at his very best. He is a pest. Then you make that one mistake and allow him to hit the ball hard. And he's got good speed. Line drive going to be caught by Loney. Back to second. They get the double play. What a grab by Loney. And then the lob down to second. They double off Roberts. Well, Loney, who throws so well, grabbed it. Had the presence of mind to go right back down to second. And they double Roberts off. Rays get out of that spot. Still tied onto the eighth.
do as we head to the top half of the eighth inning. Evan Longoria will lead off for the Rays. Longoria has really good numbers here at Yankee Stadium. His hitting coach Derek Shelton thinks his swing fits this stadium well. Yeah, Longo loves to hit here. You know, I think one of the things that we've seen him do is we've seen him drive the ball the other way in the seats here. We've seen him drive the ball, you know, into left field. But, yeah, for some reason, when, uh, when we get to New York and New Yankee Stadium, Longo likes to hit. Longoria has 12 home runs here at the New Yankee Stadium. Six of those, as Shelton said, he likes to go to right center field, have been to right center. Nine of the 12 have been to center field or right of center field. Guys, back to you. Well, there's the list here at the New Yankee Stadium, and Evan atop that list by two. Dylan Batances is the new pitcher, and you can see by the numbers there how very effective he has been. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. He pitched two innings last night against Boston. And back in there tonight with Evan Longoria due to face him. Longoria, Loney, and Geyer do up against him. Now they're all set. Evan one for three tonight. Takes the pitch high. One ball, no strikes. The Tances pitched an inning and a third Friday, and then two innings last night. And back in here tonight in the eighth inning of this 2-2 ball game. Jake McGee up now for the Rays in their bullpen. One ball, two strikes. Goes to show you all you need to know about what Joe Girardi thinks about this game. Both of these managers going to dial it up here at the end and go to their bullpens. The big guns will be coming out. Two and two. High popper. That's a foul ball. Out of reach just on the roof of the New York dugout. James Loney will be next. And then Geyer. High fly ball in the right center under it a bit too much. Ichiro makes the catch. That's the first out of the eighth as promised earlier in the game. We have the AT&T fan photo of the game. Tweet your photo to hashtag SunSports fan photo for a chance to be shown in an upcoming game broadcast brought to you by AT&T. James Loney, two of three in his career against Batances. Oh, that curveball in there for a strike. Not only does he throw hard, but he also has that very good hard curveball. And, and he's a big body, too. Six foot eight. Long limbs, long reach, good finish on pitches, and a much better command of the strike zone than when he first yep. came up, and that is what has made all the difference in the world. Yeah, 
And early May things really started to come together for him. And he's been on a dominating run. That's going to stay fair. Deshera makes the play unassisted. Well, Brandon Geyer saw Larry Rothschild, the Yankees pitching coach and former Devil Rays manager, the original manager of the Rays, of the Devil Rays through the first few seasons. Geyer takes ball one. At 96 up and in a bit. Well, he really dove out of his mechanics there, started to open up a little bit too soon, driving himself towards his own dugout as he was releasing that pitch and just missed wildly. Probably tough to keep the all six foot eight moving in the proper direction. Did it again right there. Mm -hmm. And you see mechanically just coming out of his delivery for a couple of pitches. Watch that front side fly open right there. That front side flies open before that arm is set to deliver the baseball, and that's what you're going to end up with every time. And same one more thing. time, and exactly the same thing to walk him on four pitches. Well, watch his front side. You want to stay closed until the last minute, but watch that front side open. Open way too soon, and look at where the pitches are. Just coming unglued and out of those mechanics. And he missed wildly on everything in that at bat with Geyer. Logan Forsyth. There's a strike into Forsyth. That one 97. Some high octane late. Forsyth struck out in the seventh inning against Adam Warren on a 96 mile per hour fastball. That first one here in the eighth inning came in at 97. And then the breaker. For a strike. It's David Robertson loosening in the New York bullpen. Down and away. Two outs with a runner aboard. Rays have five hits tonight. They've drawn six walks, have two runs on solo home runs. Two and two. Hannigan on deck. Key here for Forsyth is stay in the strike zone. Don't let him take you out of it. Runner goes, and the pitch is foul. The Rays had Geyer on the move. Yeah, not a bad idea either because this is a an, an action pitch. Get something out over the plate here. Two and two. You're going to be running on three and two anyway. And if it's a strikeout, inning's over. Put someone in motion. Forsyth finds a gap, take the lead. Two, two, Geyer goes again, and the pitch is fouled back. And the Rays 
have won eight of their last ten games here at Yankee Stadium. Well, averaging a little over five and a half runs a game, and the Yankees had averaged just over three runs a game in that stretch. The way it stands tonight, first to three might win it. Runner goes, the pitch down and away, and a steal for Geyer. Brandon Geyer picks up his second stolen base, and the count goes full to Forsythe. Well, these Yankee relievers, they look tonight like they're not afraid to give the Rays some life with two outs in an inning. And Brandon Geyer having to pick it up there at the end. He still gets in easily. See McCann having to reach and then not able to really step into that throw. Full count pitch, and that's why Forsyth walks. Two men on with two men out. Ryan Hannigan to be the hitter. And here comes Girardi. It's turned into be a little bit of an extended inning for Batances, who right now with 21 pitches. And Girardi's out to make a move. game of this three game series tomorrow game two and the starting pitchers presented by Chevron David Price on the hill for the Rays after his seventh win and Hiroki Kuroda will do the pitching the veteran right hander on the mound for the Yankees he's at five and five Price said the other day after that last start he thinks he is pitching as well as he's ever pitched I'm not going to argue. Mm -mm. Complete command of the strike zone, which is the key to his game to go along with plus stuff. And speaking of plus stuff, how about this guy right here, David Robertson, 18 out of 20 in saves. Obviously not a save situation in the sense of picking up a statistic for it, but you talk about the game itself, the Rays with two runners aboard, two outs, top of the eighth. And another big strikeout artist. Look over 26 innings, 47 strikeouts. Yeah, he's got that cut fastball mm -hmm. and that good curveball. You know, you know, pitch behind Mariano Rivera for all of those years and learn that pitch. I don't know if anybody will be as good at it as Rivera was, but Robertson does a nice job with it, as you can tell by his numbers. First pitch is in there, a strike taken by Ryan Hannigan.
Couple of two out walks. Rays loaded the bases with two outs in the seventh. They left two men on in the sixth, three in the seventh, and two men on with two outs here in the eighth. Hannigan lines it into left. That ball's going to be in there. Base hit. Geyer heads to the plate, and the Rays take a 3 2 lead. Geyer scores from second on the base hit by Hannigan. Forsyth wound up at third as Ryan Hannigan comes through to give the Rays the lead. Well, he went back to that pitch in, and Hannigan this time waiting for it. He just drops the head. I'll tell you what, that Yankee bullpen, they allowed the Rays right back in it with two outs, two quick outs, two walks by Betances. Bring in David Robertson. He immediately gives up a base hit, and the Rays take the lead here late. The run charge to Betances. Now Kevin Kiermeyer in there against David Robertson. That's a strike. Kiermaier two for three with a homer and a single. Bounce foul, 0-2. Kiermaier getting his first look at these Yankee pitchers and vice versa. Two for three so far tonight. Takes a big cut and fouls it. Well, we've seen a theme start to develop with Kiermaier, and that's when opposing pitchers get ahead of him. If they got good curveballs or sliders with good depth, they're trying to use those pitches out over the plate and take them below the zone to get the swing. Robertson tried to do it right there. Now they want this pitch elevated. Go down with the curve, up with the cutter. And he misses with it. One ball, two strikes. Raise on this 11 game, 10 day road trip. Took three out of four in Baltimore. Now taking a three to two lead in the eighth in New York. Ground ball foul. Jake McGee has been up in the Rays bullpen. Down two and two. And the two out walk by Kiermeyer and the steal of second. And then the walk to Forsyth. Hannigan drove in the go ahead run. Two and a take for ball three. Now, after being down in the count, it's all the way out. Foul off a couple of close pitches. A few good takes. Kiermaier is seeing the ball well, that's for sure. Three two ground ball deflected by Robertson picked up by Jeter throw to first close they got him and that will retire the side A little deflection made it interesting at first on the close play Rays get the go ahead run across the plate on a base hit from Ryan Hannigan scoring Brandon Geyer and the Rays lead three to two.
Speed three to two. Chris Archer has worked the first seven innings. He will depart. Good outing again by the young right-hander. Yeah, really, outside of the third inning where the Yankees were able to plate a couple of runs, Chris Archer was outstanding. He had a good fastball again, the slider. And this one right here, that play by James Loney, good on so many levels. First of all, he was positioned nicely, caught that line drive, got rid of it in a hurry, expecting Ben Zobers to be there, which he was. Preserved that inning for the Rays, preserved the outing for Chris Oucher, and allowed that offense to now take the lead and turn it over to the big left-hander, Jake McGee. So seven innings for Archer, 97 pitches, and now it's Jake McGee for the 39th time. 35 in the third innings, 42 strikeouts, opponent average, 158. Great numbers for Jake. Derek Jeter, Jacoby Ellsbury, and Mark Teixeira do up for New York. Jeter 0 for 3 tonight and fouls it back. Three ground balls to second for Jeter in the middle ground ball back in the third. Drove in a run. See Jeter. 0 for 5 in his career against Jake McGee. Jeter was 40 years old four days ago on the 26th. And another ground ball to second. Forsyth handles that. And so Jeter now 0 for 4 and the first out of the eighth. A big out. Kobe Ellsbury. Well, you look across Ellsbury there, four for ten against Jake McGee, and he came into this game seven of ten lifetime against Archer. He's five out of sixteen against Cobb with a home run, three of nine with a homer against Peralta, fourteen out of forty-five against. David Price with a home run. Just to give you an idea what a pain he has been to raise pitching. Want to know the count against Jake McGee right now, Ellsbury? I think you do a lot of things with you, too, offensively. You know, he's not a one dimensional player. Good gap to gap power. There's a strike, one and one. Occasional home run. Speed on the base pass can steal himself into scoring position. Two balls and a strike. That's Teixeira on deck. McGee pitched an inning and a third Saturday in the 5 to 4 win in Baltimore. 2 2. That's a game in which he struck out Manny Machado, went to 2 2 with him and a couple of foul balls, and then struck him out on a curveball to end it. He's 2 2 with Ellsbury. One out, nobody on in the eighth here in New York. And a little looper into shallow right. And Ellsbury's on base again. Third time he's reached tonight. And he continues to be a nemesis for the Rays. And did not hit that ball well at all. But he got enough of it to power it over the head of Forsyth and drop it into shallow right field. A little bloop right here. Great effort by Logan. Just cannot get to it. Now it's Mark Teixeira. The 
Chair is singled in the sixth. Batting from the right side here in the pitch it is a strike. And as far as Mark Teixeira goes, what you're afraid of with him is right-handed power the other way. Yeah. You know, 96 to 99 mile an hour fastball, you figure he's going to be a little tardy on it. If it's out over the plate or away, you're afraid of that flare fly ball to right field. Mm -hmm. Ellsbury back in at first. They can get cozy out there and right. We've seen a number of times. And you can see to share his break out there. Fouls it back. And that's called at 98, and that's precisely why they tried to come in on him. If you, if you set up in and you get it to your spot, he's not going to be able to hit you out the other way. No way. You force him to have to either pull that ball, or if he does, if he is a little bit late, it's going to jam him badly. The pitch, the fastball, the hard stuff away is what you worry about. See if they come back in here with two strikes. Jake, another check on Ellsbury. A one for two stolen bases against Jake. He does have a pickoff. Two strike pitch. He got him. Struck him out. That one hit 99. And to share is the second out of the inning. You know, up the velocity, up the height of the pitch. Watch where this ends up as far as the strike zone goes. That ball is up and away and just not able to get there. Not at 99. That's a gutsy pitch because that's one of those where if he is able to make solid contact. Overpowered him. Here's Brian McCann. Like he letting Ellsbury know that he's fully aware of him. And shoots it foul. That one well fouled off the facing of the upper deck. He was just trying to get started early. I, yeah, I, did. I don't know if I've ever seen anybody even trying to get started early get around like that on a Jake McGee fastball. And that's why Ryan Hannigan immediately is going to go to the mound here. McCann selling out for that fastball. You see everybody moving that, <laughs> moving the defense all the way around. <laughs> They've now just put the shift on out of the blue. Moved their entire defense based on that one swing. That's strike two call at 99. Two fly ball lifted into short left. Here comes Geyer, and he cannot catch it. Over to third, Ellsbury. He will stop there. They were waving him. They were, you know, Jacoby Ellsbury. Uh, Jacoby Ellsbury, I think, made an early decision to stop at third. He was being waved home. You just don't know how many more chances you're going to get off of Jake McGee, and that was just a misplay out there by Brandon Geyer all around. 
I don't know if he had a hard time picking it up. I mean, it's a pure, it's a black sky here. Should have been easy to pick up, but a little hesitation right there, then pick it up again, then a dive, and he just missed it. And with that ball bounding away from him like that, well, you just wonder with two outs, if Ellsbury's running hard on contact, he should have scored easily. Big break for the Rays. Because off the bat, it appeared to be a fairly routine and catchable ball. And, and Jacoby was not going hard around second. And by the time he picked it up and went to third, he assumed it and stayed there instead of heading home like he was being waved to. That's a strike to Beltron. First and third, two outs. This one low block by Hannigan. It's one and one. On the count. And a pop up. Foul ball. Hannigan's back after it with room, and the Rays get out of the inning. Beltron fouls out for Hannigan after that one. As soon as it left the bat, two men left. We go to the ninth. 3 2, Tampa Bay. Coming up on Rays Live, the post game presented by Checkers. Rich and Arrestus will be back in L.A. Anchor coverage. Joe Madden's press conference, part of our coverage as well. Todd Callis will have interviews from the clubhouse. And Chris Archer continues his role. We'll take a look at that. So stay with us for our continuing coverage from Yankee Stadium in the Bronx upon the conclusion of this game. David Robertson came on in the eighth, gave up the base hit to Hannigan. That drove in Geyer. And then Kiermaier grounded out. In the ninth, the Rays will have the top of the order. Desmond Jennings, Ben Zobris, and then Matt Joyce. Two walks for Desmond. And out of that leadoff spot, you hear a walk is as good as a hit, and that's absolutely true. For especially the leadoff man as he tries to get on base, set the stage for something. And the Rays leading by one would welcome a little insurance. Hit. 
Pitch is a strike. Desmond shortened on the bat. And he's hit by the pitch. So the Rays will get the leadoff man on. Desmond will go to first. And we'll see what the Rays can do with that. Trying to throw that cutter in and he just never got it there. Clips Desmond right on that front leg. Well, this gives the Rays an opportunity for some breathing room. Well, Peralta is up in the Rays bullpen. He'd appreciate another run or two. Mm hmm. It's been Zobrist. And a strike on the outside part of the plate. Jennings caught trying to steal in the fifth. Been back in at first. Rays have left nine men on base in this game. Yankees have stranded seven. And a step back by Robertson. One and one. Rays have drawn seven walks in this game, and five of the seven have been from Jennings and Zobrist. And now Jennings has been hit by a pitch, so he's on base for the third time. He's going pitch out, and the throw is going to get him. Jennings on the pitch out. Runs into the caught stealing. Again, it's Jeter to put the tag on it. Now, the, the question you ask yourself, Yankees obviously guessing correctly there. You know, a guy like Desmond Jennings, he's going to have the green light. But boy, the Yankees anticipate very well. And you can see the look even on Ben Zobris when he knew that he wasn't going to be able to reach that to try to swing, that this was probably inevitable. So the Rays lose the base runner, and now it's a 2-1 count on Zobrist. Three balls and a strike. You know, not a bad pitch to run on if you're Desmond Jennings. A gamble if you're the Yankees, because you throw that pitch. If Jennings is not going, it's 2-1. That's, yep. that's the swing pitch where you need a strike, and you're deliberately throwing a ball banking on the fact that he's going to be running and they got it right he'll take that 2-1 count to raise the base run number foul so it's a full count and Joe Madden wants to talk with Will Little, the uh, plate umpire. And whatever it is, I guess Madden is satisfied now. Three and two. And a swing and a miss. Zobrist out on strikes. Two gone. Not often pitches moving in this direction from Robertson. 
And that's away from Ben, a little change of pace. Well, you don't see that very often from him, but it was certainly effective. Well, especially after a whole lot bat. Yeah. You know, you, you work all the way full, full count. Last thing you're looking for is that. There's Matt Joyce. Lifting it into the left. Gardner coming in to make the catch, and the Rays are out in the ninth. So we'll go into the bottom half of the ninth inning. Rays lead 3-2. Johnson, Roberts, and Ichiro do. Tomorrow, the Rays and the Yankees in the middle game of this three-game series. Our coverage begins at 6.30, and David Price on the mound coming off that double-digit strikeout performance against the Pirates last Wednesday. We've got five of those in order. And after his 10th career win tomorrow over New York, he's 9-5 and five against the Yankees. Joel Peralta is the new pitcher for the Rays moving into the bottom of the ninth inning. Peralta trying to close this one out. Now he's on for the 38th time, 38 strikeouts and 34 innings facing the bottom three of this Yankees lineup. Keeps him off the scoreboards. The Rays will walk out of here winners tonight. He's going to face Kelly Johnson to lead it off, and Johnson is three for seven against him lifetime. 0 for two with a walk in this game. So here's Peralta facing Kelly Johnson. Brian Roberts next, and then Ichiro Suzuki. Pitch, he starts him with a strike. Ground ball. Back of first, and Loney protecting the line is right there. One gone. When you talk about protecting the line, he was standing on the line. Taking away anything that Johnson was going to be able to try to get down into the corner. Watch. Look where he's at. <laughs> that left foot right on the chalk. One away, and here's Brian Roberts. Robert singled his last time. One ball, 
ball and no strikes. Well, this is why it works. James Loney right here, you keep the ball from going up the line, you force it out into here, and you got a fielder out there. So that cuts down the distance that the right fielder, Kevin Kiermaier, would have to go for a base hit. Just kind of like funneling the ball. Anything that would be headed up the line that he would have to run for, you're going to field it. Now, if he hits it to the right of you, okay, base hit. But Kiermaier more in line to be able to go get that and keep you to just a single. And this is a typical late inning setup defensively for most teams. Big cut and a miss, and it's two and one. Peralta at 91, that four seamer up. Yep, and that's the key is up. Right, letter high. Foul back. Again, that pitch up, and it's two and two. Grant Balfour throwing in the Rays bullpen. Stairs. Three balls, two strikes. Rays with Toronto off, trying to pick up some ground, trying to get nine and a half games behind Toronto. Trying to get out of double digits in the games behind column. They need two outs to get there. 3 2 the count to Roberts. Pops it back a third. Longoria gives it a chase, but it's out of play. And of course, another 3 2 pitch. Full count pitch again. And it's foul out of play one more time. Peralta got Kelly Johnson. Now full up on Roberts. Got a run in the eighth to take a three to two lead. We're in the bottom of the ninth. And the three two again. Long drive to right, and that one is going to go. Hits its fourth home run, and the game is tied at three. Well, Peralta sped up the swing of Brian Roberts with a number of fastballs that he was behind on, and then came with a split, and it was right into his swing. Maybe that was the fastball. Either way, down and in. 
Perfectly placed for a left-handed hitter. Well, yeah, and you know, you think about those pitches that he was tardy on. They were up middle, up above the zone, and then that one down and in. I guess just because it was down, it had that look of a split, but even the fastball down and in, you're right. It ends up becoming a golf shot for a left-handed hitter. Strike one to Ichiro. Well, the Rays two outs away from a victory, and now they'll try to retire the Yankees and move it into extra innings. Sliding catch, Jennings in center, nicely done on the sinking liner off the bat of Ichiro Suzuki. So two outs in the bottom of the ninth in what is now a tie game. And here's Gardner. Gardner tripled in a run in the third and scored the second run of the game. He's up here with two outs and the base is empty in the ninth. And that's a strike at the knees. Roberts home run has tied this game. You talk about two guys in this lineup who have been a nemesis to the Rays through the years and Roberts is one of them when he played for the Orioles. Ellsbury the other one when he played for the Red Sox and he's been that way with the Yankees and Roberts has just hit a home run to tie the game. Strike two to Gardner. Gardner lined into the double play in the seventh when Roberts was doubled off second. Now he bats with the bases empty. And a swing and a miss. Gardner out on strikes. But a home run by Brian Roberts has tied this game and will send it into extra innings onto the 10th, 3 3. Way back in the first inning on a two out solo home run by Matt Joyce. They added another one in the third. This is a leadoff home run. Kevin Kiermeyer hit a 3 2 pitch out. 
But in the bottom of the third, the Yankees scored on the triple by Gardner that chased home Ichiro Suzuki. Then Jeter's ground ball to second scored Gardner from third. That ground ball tied the game 2 2. Gray's got a go ahead run home in the eighth on Hannigan's RBI single. Brian Roberts' home run tied it in the bottom of the ninth. And now Evan Longoria leads off the tenth. It's a ground ball to short. Jeter's throw to first is in time. And on the first pitch in the tenth inning, one gone. Sean Kelly is the new pitcher, the fifth of the night for New York. Here's one and two with a 487. David Robertson worked an inning and a third. Gave up a hit, picked up a strikeout, hit a man. And James Loney in against Kelly. Pitches away. Ground to second. Roberts with an easy toss. Double ground balls against the tall right hander. Yeah, and this is a guy who is a fly ball pitcher. I mean, his breakout this year coming in, well, now add those two in 18 ground balls to 22 fly balls. Last year, 45 ground balls to 61 fly balls. Mm -hmm. Definitely a heavy swing fly ball guy, and recording two of the Rays' big guns on the ground. Brandon Geyer. The pitch is a strike. Geyer 0 for 3. He walked, stole the base, and scored a run in the eighth. Sean Kelly's career started in 2009 with the Seattle Mariners. He does not have one season where ground balls have outpaced fly balls. <laughs> not one. Back to back ground balls here. And as we were discussing uh, before the game, this is turning out to be more of a ground ball season uh, than ever before. Such a, a, a point of emphasis in putting a team together. Fly ball right field. That's Ichiro making the catch. One, two, three, go the Rays. Bottom of the tenth coming up. Three, three ball game. Beef jerky all season long. Jack Link's beef jerky feed your wild side.
Tie game, bottom of the tenth from Yankee Stadium. Chris Archer was just two outs away from getting a win. And no decision now for his work. McGee followed Peralta. And now the right-hander Grant Balfour comes on. 32nd appearance for Balfour. Well, he's going to need to come up big here because he's going right through the heart of this Yankees lineup. Jeter, Ellsbury, Teixeira. It's not going to be easy, and Grant's going to need to be precise with his location. Well, all of them give you some concern. I mean, we know how difficult Jeter can be, and Ellsbury's murdered the Rays. And then Teixeira in the head-to-head -head matchup. Teixeira is 7 of 17 with two home runs against Balfour. So it's going to be tough any way you look at it here with these three guys coming up. Jeter 0 for 4. Four ground balls to second base tonight. Drove in a run with one of those ground balls back in the third inning. Shortens the pitch as a strike. Peralta worked an inning. Gave up one run on the home run. That was the only hit he surrendered. Struck out one, didn't walk anybody. I think Derek Jeter was trying to get a, not going to put this down, going to take it and expect a ball. Instead of being up, he is down 0 and 1. There's strike two. Fastball in at 93. From Grant Balfour. Two strike pitch. Slider down. Ball, two strikes. And there's a liner into right center field for a base hit. Jeter takes it the other way as he so often has in his career. Leads off the bottom of the tenth with a single. Wow, I mean, a big part of what Derek Jeter does is the other way. And with two strikes, a pitch down and away, it just, he doesn't overswing. That's the whole key. Watch this swing. Want it in. It's yanked down and away, and just a little half swing out there. Very little on the follow through and finish. Just get the barrel to the baseball. Here's Jacoby Ellsbury. He's been on base three times. That's a strike. One and one. Both starters gave up two runs. The bullpen has surrendered a run for each team. And Jeter's at first. Leadoff single in the bottom of the tenth. That's fouled away. One and two.
Kircher works seven. McGee one. Peralta one. Yankees scored the tying run with one out in the bottom of the ninth on Brian Roberts' fourth home run of the year. Got a home run out of the number eight spot in the lineup to tie it. The popper in the short left. Geyer's there to catch this one. And they get Ellsbury for the first out. Brad Balfour, the one thing that he does very well is work to his arm side. And so he sets up well against left-handed hitters. That's why he was so adamant way back in that early Boston series in wanting to face David Ortiz when it looked like the Rays were going to intentionally walk him to get to Mike Napoli. Almost seems as if he's more comfortable against the lefties because of that good arm side fastball. Well, there are the numbers that we spoke of in the matchup between Balfour and Teixeira. This pitch misses. One ball, no strikes. Teixeira had a base hit over the shift to right field in the sixth. The Rays have the shift on. Longoria alone on the left side. Big cut. One and one. Balfour trying to pitch around the leadoff single. Game tied in the bottom of the tenth. There's a strike. One and two. The Orioles have beaten the Rangers seven to one. It's down and in. Two and two. Two still. One on, one out, a two two count. Foul four and to share the matchup. In those seven hits and 17 at bats for Teixeira. Lifetime against Balfour. Six of those have come in his last 10 at bats against him. And the pitch inside. That runs the count to three and two. Try and crowd him two and two and get a swing, and he almost goes for it. Almost caught the bat, too, and that could have been a foul tip in the glove of Hannigan. Close. Three balls, two strikes. Runner goes, swing and a miss. The throw down is loose. Zobris could not glove it, and Jeter is in with the steal. It would have been interesting had they been able to. To handle that ball cleanly, as Teixeira strikes out. 
Zobras coming from an odd angle. That ball away. Teixeira is out over the top of it. That was going to be very, very close. But you see Ben's getting there a little bit late. He's not set up. Hannigan thought they were going to get him. So two outs. Jeter has stolen second base. Brian McCann is going to be the hitter. Beltron is behind him. McCann 0 for 4. Lifetime against Balfour. And you know they're handing him the left side. And the pitch is a strike. You got one infielder right here. You got Evan Longoria and all this room. I mean, right from here all the way up the line. One man defending. You really got to put a lot of faith into those charts with the game on the line. Mm -hmm. One ball, one strike. And Beltron on deck with first base open. That's a strike. One and two. Just move Ben Zobra. So you see him now shading up the middle. A little bit different setup with two strikes. Ooh, very close with that one, and McCann takes it for ball two. Well, that was almost the same pitch. Almost the same pitch. That may have been off maybe another inch, maybe. Let's see how close it is to pitch number three. So the count square, two balls, two strikes. And a swing and a miss. So McCann is out on strike swinging. Second strikeout in succession. He got Teixeira swinging, McCann swinging. A hit and a man left, and we're headed into the 11th. This game's still tied.
we go to the 11th inning. Logan Forsythe will lead it off here for the Rays. Sean Kelly still on the mound for New York. Forsythe walked his last time, 0 for 3 overall, and lines a base hit into right center field. Rays will put the leadoff man on as Forsythe makes the turn and hangs on with a leadoff single in the 11th. Well, the Rays down at the bottom of their order, but Logan Forsythe, he's been swinging the bat well recently. One of the hottest hitters in the big leagues, and he takes that ball the other way. And so many options now with the leadoff man aboard. Hannigan coming to the plate, and you immediately start to think about the bunt up to second base here. Well, Hannigan drove in the third run of the game with a base hit in the eighth inning that scored Geyer. Now he's up with Forsyth at first. He's going to bunt and does so foul out of play. And that is absolutely the right call. Execute that bunt. Get Forsyth into scoring position. Kiermeyer on deck and then the top of the order. Take your chances. Yankees left Jeter in scoring position at the bottom of the 10th. Rays trying to get Forsyth into scoring position here in the 11th. John Kelly retired the Rays on two ground balls and a fly ball in the 10th. And the bunt up the first base side is fouled. So it's 0-2. And, and Hannigan not happy with himself that he's not been able to put down the bunt. Yeah, and you know what? I'd do it again. I'd give him the third shot. Get the bunt down. Get the runner into scoring position. Here we go. Rays have Kevin Kiermeyer on deck. Jennings due behind him. Pitch down. No indication from Hannigan there. Take another look at Tom Foley, the Rays third base coach. And a fly ball lifted into center. Ellsbury is there to take care of it. So Hannigan is the first out. Not able to advance the runner. And that's where tightly contested games fundamentals come into play. And, you know, if you're able to get the bunt down, that's playing small ball and gives you an opportunity to try and score the runner. You don't do it, fly ball, you take the out, the runner's still at first. So it's one on, one out with Forsyth at first. Kevin Kiermeyer up here and the pitch is a ball a little bit wide. We're having some technical issues and we appreciate your patience and apologize for that. One on, one out in the 11th. One and one. Kiermaier belted a home run in the third, his seventh of the year. 3-2 3-2 pitch out to right field off the starter, David Phelps. And lines this one into right. That's going to drop for a base hit. Down to second goes Forsyth. Two men on with one out. That gets Forsyth into scoring position on the base hit. Well, Kevin Kiermeyer coming through once again. Gets a ball that's out over the plate. Just... He puts a good swing on it, lines it to right field, and now the Rays, first and second, top of the order. Here's your chance here. Just one out. This is where the Rays have really 
struggled over the long haul all season. The big hit in the big spot. Two men on with one out. Desmond Jennings is the hitter. Desmond with a couple walks. One strike to count on him. He was hit by a pitch in the ninth inning twice tonight. He has been caught stealing. And Jennings is hit by a pitch again. That's going to load the bases. So Jennings hit by a pitch. And the Rays will have the bases loaded. Forsyth going over to third with Kiermaier at second and Desmond headed to first base. Again, we apologize for our technical difficulties here in the 11th inning from New York. Doing our best to work around those. And we appreciate your forbearance. Ben Zobrist will be the hitter for the Rays. Kelly on the mound, and the first pitch is a strike. Ben, three walks. He has grounded out and has struck out. Infield up here for New York. Pitch popped up. That's a foul ball. Two strikes the count on Ben Zobris. Zobris with two strikes, nubbing one foul. Forsyth single. Hannigan twice missed on the Bunt attempt and then hit a fly ball to center for the first out. But Kiermaier followed with a base hit to right. Desmond Jennings was hit by a pitch. That loaded the bases. And now Zobrist trying to get the go-ahead run home against the drawn-in infield. He's down two strikes. Zobris out on strikes. Two gone here in the 11th. It's going to be up to Matt Joyce now. Joyce against Kelly. Matt one for three in his career against Sean Kelly. One strike to count. Joyce down 0 2, fouling one. Raise with a couple hits and a hit batter to load the bases. Two outs, two strikes, the count to Matt Joyce.
Joy strikes out. is the new pitcher for the Rays. Carlos Beltran will lead off the bottom of the 11th inning for New York. Rays left the bases loaded in the top half of this inning. And the Yankees left a man in scoring position in the 10th. Well, again, we apologize for the technical difficulties. We're doing our best to remedy that, and so we appreciate your patience in this situation. And Carlos Beltran to be the leadoff hitter in the bottom of the 11th against Brad Boxberger. Kelly Johnson do next, and then Brian Roberts. One ball, no strikes. Boxberger last worked in the first game of Friday's doubleheader in Baltimore. One and one to count on Beltron. Boxberger worked an inning at a third in that game against Baltimore. Gave up one run on a home run. He struck out four, didn't walk anybody, and was touched for a home run by Manny Machado. He's behind Beltron. Two balls and a strike. A great stop at first base by Loney with Boxberger covering to take care of Beltron. One out in the bottom of the 11th inning. And the former Ray Kelly Johnson is due up. Johnson is 0 for 3. He walked back in the second inning. He's grounded out twice, hit a fly ball to center, and takes the first pitch 
for a strike. Archer works seven, gave up two. McGee, one inning. Peralta, one. Balfour, one. And now it's Boxberger. Boxberger ahead of Johnson. Two strikes. Archer gave up two runs back in the third. McGee's stint was scoreless. Peralta touched for the one-out bottom of the ninth home run by Brian Roberts. Balfour worked the tenth. Johnson, the second hitter in the 11th of all two strikes to count on him. And Brian Roberts, who tied the game in the ninth inning, is due next. Count remains one and two on Kelly Johnson. Cubs shut out the Red Sox two to nothing at Fenway. And the Orioles at home beat the Rangers seven to one. Two and two the count on Kelly Johnson. With the shift on, he rolls this one up the third base side, and Hannigan chases it down there and pops it foul. Just to make sure it stayed foul. Or with that left side open with the exception of Longoria and he was way around toward second base near the shortstop spot. No chance for him to get to it. If that ball rolls on its own, it could kick back fair at any moment. Yeah, especially with the funky spin that's going to be for sure on that baseball. Had to chase it a long way. Roller to the right side and Forsyth handles that. It'll be the second out. So the bases are empty with two gone. And that brings on Brian Roberts who hit a 3-2 pitch out of here in the ninth inning. That connected off Joel Peralta.
technical difficulties we are experiencing here from New York. Jose Ramirez will be the new pitcher for the New York Yankees. So he will be the sixth New York pitcher of the game. And Evan Longoria will lead off for the Rays. Pitch in Lagoria takes it for a ball. One ball, no strikes. Evan singled in the first. It's his only hit of the night so far. He is one for five, and Ramirez misses again. Two and zero. Oh. And that the key will be to be patient with Ramirez. This is a guy with, with nine big league innings. Given up 10 hits. He's also walked six. So the command, good arm, but can spray it all over. Two balls and a strike. Yeah, his velocity can be 94, 95. Fly ball into right. Suzuki is there. That's the first out in the 12th inning. Yankees tied it with a run, a home run from Brian Roberts in the bottom of the ninth. They got two innings from Sean Kelly, who gave up a couple of hits and hit a man in the 11th. Struck out two in his outing. And those were the two biggest strikeouts of the game thus far. Yep. Bases loaded, one out, and he gets Zobrist and Joyce back to back to end it. And we march on. We've hit the 360 pitch mark in this game. Now here's Loney. Loney singled in the sixth inning. He takes the ball. You know, we talk about James Loney picking his spot every now and then to try and drive one. Now would be one of those times. Yes, this would be a very good spot for that. Look for something out over the plate and cut it loose. And he takes a big cut and pops it foul. Kelly Johnson just against the railing. That's the second out. Brandon Geyer up here looking for his first hit tonight. He walked in the eighth, picked up a steal of second, and was driven home by Ryan Hannigan to give the Rays a 3-2 to two lead. One ball, no strikes. Two and nothing. Three ball, no strike count. The Yankees have made a habit out of this tonight. Get the first couple of outs in an inning and then all of a sudden open the door ever so slightly for Rays hitters. Maybe this time they kick it in. That's a strike call to Geyer. Makes it three and one. Now 
three and two. Boy, what good arm by Ramirez. Got that low sling. That's where he's able to create that good velocity. Great arm action. He pitched an inning last night against Boston. Geyer got a little piece of it, staying alive. Ramirez was up earlier in the season for a couple of weeks with the Yankees. Fouled out of play. In his major league debut in uh, early June. Gave up a home run to Josh Donaldson. He suffered the loss as a result of that. He worked two innings and gave up two hits, one of them the Donaldson home run. And Geyer draws the walk. So with two outs, once again, a walk issued to the Rays. That's eight walks from Yankee pitching and a couple hit batters. And here's Logan Forsythe. Forsythe led off the 11th with a base hit. Bats again in the 12th inning. Again, we apologize for the technical issues. We have experienced. Forsyth walked in the eighth. He singled in the eleventh. Two outs with a runner at first. And there goes Geyer. The pitch is a strike, and Geyer's in there safely with a stolen base. Geyer didn't waste any time in stealing his second base of the night. As the count on Forsyth stands at nothing and one. Well, sometimes you got to take chances. And you get that walk and you get him in motion. And now a base hit. The Rays possibly take the lead in this game. And Logan Forsyth, who's been swinging a pretty hot stick here for the Rays, may be the right man. And there's a base hit up the middle into center. Geyer heads to the plate, and the Rays are going to take the lead. Logan Forsyth, exactly the right man at the right time, picks up his second hit of the night, and the Rays retake the lead. It's 4-3. to three. So the two-out walk, the steal, and then the base hit. And the Rays take the lead. Well, Logan again, you know, he takes that ball right back up the middle. A short, quick stroke. Doesn't overswing it. And the Rays, two outs, nobody on. The Yankees re relievers open up that door once again. And they cash in. Well, that's huge. 1-0 the count to Ryan Hannigan. A couple of steals tonight by Geyer after drawing a walk, and they've led to two of the runs for the Rays tonight. High foul up the right side. That's going to be out of play. And it takes the count to a ball and a strike. Rays now have nine hits. One and one to count. High fly ball. Right center. Ichiro is there to make the catch. With two outs, the Rays score the go-ahead run. One run, one hit, one left. Rays lead by a run.
In fact, coming out of the Baltimore series and that big win yesterday, he had a two-run home run, a couple of hits and a walk, and two hits in extra innings tonight for Forsyth, including the base hit in the top half of this inning that has given the Rays the lead. So it's four to three. As we go to the bottom of the 12th inning, New York will have Ichiro Suzuki to lead off against Brad Boxberger. And then back around at the top of the order, Gardner and Jeter. Well, we apologize for our technical difficulties here in the late stages of this game. Little by little, we're trying to piece things back together. And here's Ichiro Suzuki. First pitch from Boxberger is upstairs. Boxberger came on and gave the Rays a 1 2 3 11th inning. Juan Carlos Oviedo is up in the Rays bullpen. They've had Archer, McGee, Peralta, Balfour, and Boxberger. And there's a strike. One and one. Well, for Boxberger, you know, the fastball, the changeup, you see where Loney's position. He's going to take away anything down that line. And we've seen that basically from the ninth inning on. Force that ball to your right side. If Suzuki wants a single, go right ahead. Cut the miss. One and two. Boxberger pitched one inning yesterday. Picked up a strikeout. And right back now, you can see 19 pitches for him. Yankees out of right-handers. And so Huff, the lefty, is up in their pin. Just in case, line drive foul. Holds the count at one and two. Always the danger with Suzuki, the way that he can manipulate that bad hit balls off the plate away that are coming down and in. He just been a master with that bad. Want to make sure that you keep him off base, especially wrapping around to the top of that order once again. Make a pitch here. And he did. Strikes him out. That fastball by Boxberger. And the Rays have reached nine strikeouts tonight. They got four from Archer, one from McGee, one from Peralta, a couple by Balfour. And now Boxberger. Here's Brett Gardner. So the Rays needed those nine strikeouts to set the major league record for strikeouts in a month. And that was number nine. It comes in the 12th inning. A strike to Gardner. So they needed a little bit extra time, and they still get it done. And I think the, to get it done in the confines of a win, even better if they can hold on here and get a couple more outs. Two strikes to the count. A good change up with good finish there. And Gardner just cannot wait back long enough. Pitch just missed wide. One and two. Boxberger and Gardner facing off for the first time. On a lot of at bats in this Yankee lineup against Boxberger, who'd spent most of his time over in the National League with the Padres. It's foul out of play. It's a one and two count.
Berger up and away. Two balls and two strikes. Boxberger trying to get his first victory in a Rays uniform. Ground ball comes right up to Forsyth, who is shaded toward the hole. So Gardner is out of there. Two outs here in the 12th. And Derek Jeter will be the next hitter. Jeter singled in the 10th. He drove in a run with a ground ball to second in the third. So the Rays now one out away. They were two outs away from closing it out in the ninth. Now they find themselves in the 12th, needing one final out. Pitch to Jeter down and in. A ball, no strikes. You don't even want to see Jacoby Ellsbury coming back up to the plate, so you want to finish it right here. Yeah, there is absolutely no percentage in seeing Ellsbury at all. No. So let's avoid that. That's a strike on the corner. It's one and one. count. Strike out and a ground out here in the 12th so far. Jeter fouls this one back. It's one and two. Boxberger worked the 11th, two outs into the 12th. Jeter hits it on the ground to third. Longoria's throw, and the Rays are winners. 12 innings, one, two, three, go the Yankees in the 12th. And the Rays win this game. It's a four to three final. For the Rays, 4-9-0 with 13 left. For the Yankees, 3-9-0 with eight men left on base. It was the base hit by Logan Forsythe to give the Rays the victory. It chased home Brandon Geyer to give the Rays a 4-3 win. Boxberger's going to win it. For Brian Anderson and Todd Callis, Dwayne Stats, our studio is next.